Hey now! Oh, I'm sorry, the moment I hit that was the moment that now I'm just saying, I'll be right back. It's like I, I was already clicking. Hey now, we're live. Well, I know Noun went somewhere, but you could say something, Kyle. Well, I'm alive. I was just uh, turning my TV back on. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting on Jesse. He said, I, I just texted him. He says, Hold on. Bop, 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 bop. All right, let me let me get the word out that we're live. Oh, yeah. Do you notice something when I'm typing? No, I'm not looking at Discord, dude. I'm I'm trying to do my thing. Well, here. I mean, you can't hear my microphone as much as you used to. What are you talking I mean, about? My, uh, my keyboard. I, I heard that quite clearly. Well, shit. Yeah, that that that's not I guess a thing. I have to mess with it a bit more. But... All right, give me a second to type this up and get everything. Let's see if you're yapping at me, I can't. Okay. I almost pulled GT Spark Ray. Spark Hole. Okay, all right, that's the YouTube video. Go post on the Discord. Oh, the Discords. Oh, okay, Jesse said he's here, he's just got to set up. Sick. His girlfriend might be joining us. I don't know if that's still a thing. It was going to be a thing yesterday. He's dating this new girl. She seems nice. Cool. She was the one that texted me that he was in the hospital yesterday. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he fell down and, like, fucked his shoulder up. Well, that's not good. No, it's not. Jesse, fall down and go boom. All right, I'm going to post on Facebook. <sighs> of course, Facebook's always behind in, like, getting data from Twitch. So the description says the unnamed tampon night. I mean, Twitter's behind every once in a while. Yeah, but Twitter's usually behind by like a day. You know what I'm saying? Yep. This is this is like from last last Tuesday, actually la last Wednesday. Streamlabs is behind a little bit on my end too. Whenever I have the um, the chat widget on screen. It shows a name from a previous stream, but it's usually like two or three streams ago. Wow. Well, that could be bots that just lurk. Piss boat, toot toot. Hey, Ross. Hey, uh, AJ. What's going on, party people? Um, now, and has briefly stepped away, and uh, we're waiting on Jesse setting up right now. So, and we got some lovely Dragon Quest Four music playing for you guys in the meantime. Gonna be in and out like Mark lies about. Oh, you mean his penis? I got you. Oh, you mean his penis is the thing that I just walked into. Yes. Isn't it great? Sparkle. Thank you for the host, good sir. You're welcome. Hey, Dragonite, how goes it? Oh, I like that emoji. What is that? Katimo sip. It's it's cute. A little sipping on a little like coffee or perhaps tea, maybe even hot cocoa. Oh my! I don't even know what's oh my about that. It just is. Because it's hot chocolate. Oh my! I, I... <laughs> see. I'm I'm sorry. Like it's just it's not sexual in any way. It just sounds sexual. You could make it sexual, and you're like, oh yeah. You know what? That's I you have no one to blame but myself. Sexual. Well. Boy, Jesse's taking a long time to set his thing up. Oh my god, shut up. <laughs> I can't help it. The 600 series had rubber skin. Uh, it's Coco. You only remember that because I reminded you. Well, I remembered that because AJ said it. No, I did. What are you talking about? AJ said that in the chat. Okay. Whoa, that was loud. 
<laughs> I was near the uh, mic, sorry. Uh, the 600 series had reddish skin. I think I missed that maybe, one. Maybe I should give you the tip, kid. Ah, oh, Barrel, what's up, dude? Yeah. We're just waiting on Jesse. But that's okay. Let everybody populate Jesse. up and in here and all that happy crappy. This would be why we start a little early. Yeah. I, that is literally part of the reason, yeah. Part of the reason, like, people ask me, like, oh, why do you start at, like, 7.30 when your time says 8? And I'm like, I start early to give myself a chance to fuck up and fix things. <laughs> That's literally what happened yeah. with me. Yeah, so, like, if I, if I fuck up and I have to, like, you know, make some adjustments or whatever, then I'll be on time. Minecraft NB? What? Okay, well... Oh, oh, because it's a B. I get it. Now it's coffee. Welcome, Evie. Probably Evie. restarting Discord to fix my issues with my wireless earbuds, but you know what? I just, I, I don't care enough to try that. <laughs> okay. The Minecraft B is trans. It's a B. Okay. It can be. It can do that. I mean... It can be. Yeah, it do be like that. Hey, Barrel. Because that's how it be. <laughs> Jesse, hurry up. What is going on? I'm gonna ask him. Holy hell. I say, what are you setting up? A coffee shop? Well, I'll tell you what, there's nothing holy about hell. Jingle bells, paid in smells, Tanya still ain't shit. That's real. It's incredibly real. That's so real. That's the realest shit in the history of reality. I will be right back in like a minute. Okay, I'm gonna time you. Not really. I'm not gonna time her. <laughs> uh, uh. Is that so? You gotta be a little louder. I said, is that so? There you go. You got a boom mic, put it near your face. Welcome to the boom mic club. Better? Ooh, a lot better. That's actually loud as fuck, I like it. Okay. So how's everybody doing today? We're still waiting on Jesse. I always worry when I have it this close to my face that it's gonna be ridiculously loud. No, it's perfect. You sound good. The only issue that I had with having my microphone so close to my face was that I had like breathing noises and shit, but now that I got this the filter, it shouldn't really be a thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, you have no idea how obscene that sounded. Gross. Sounded like a uh, obscene phone call somebody would call from, the, from the 80s would call you up and go <sighs> <sighs> It's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you were you were literally talking. Yeah, with Sean. Yeah. Wait, was Barrel gonna shower with Sean? I'm a little behind on chat here. Hey, Terry. Oh God. Sean, watch out. He might have an entire ham with him, and he will make you watch him eat it. What? It it's a long story. Jesse, what is going on? Let me tag him. The minute has passed. I didn't time you, but Kyle did. It has actually been a minute and 40 seconds. Oh no. That's almost two minutes. Oh no. That's if you're going by real time. You might not be, I don't know. I never go by real time. Maybe it was a, a hot minute. It, yeah, it was a hot minute. It was a okay. hot minute, there you go. We, like. Quickly, but not necessarily 60 seconds exactly. Yeah, I intended to go for a minute, but it was uh, eh, somewhere around. <laughs> now, see, now, EB Agent, if it was the List Critics Cats film edition, we would have to release the podcast and then re-release it with, like, the DLC added on. Speaking oh of God. cats, I have to say that, like, part of, you know, my going over the time that I declared, I had to stop and pet Oh, meow, meow, meow. Meow. Meow, meow. 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 
Meow. Imagine if you went to see the movie Cats and they didn't like talk or sing or anything. They just pointed at each other and went meow. 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 And that was the entire fucking movie. It probably would meow, have. Bitch. It would probably be a slightly higher ranking on Rotten Tomatoes than it is right now. That would be hilarious. Yeah. That would be funny. Or, or if they were all playing like that game on um, Super Trooper, where it's like you got to say meow so many times. You know, I've never and seen just... that movie. <laughs> that episode oh of Mandalorian God. got a hundred on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't care. Okay. I I don't. I'm sorry. I, I just. I, yeah, I, don't, not I don't know that. about like Star Wars either. I just thought it was interesting. I, I like Star Wars. I just I I like the movies. I don't care about no TV shows or comic books or video games or anything. You know. The Mandalorian. It just it's a bit much to t- to. Half man, half Delorean, Mandalorian. <laughs> All right, I'm going to text him again, because I don't know what the hell's going on. The last message I got from Jesse was, I'm setting up. That was a... God, that was like th- 15 minutes ago. Oh, no. <laughs> Oof. How long does it take to set up? The Mangolorian. Maybe it's stuck doing Windows updates. I don't know what he meant by set up. No, he doesn't have a Windows PC. He has a Mac, but then again, I believe he's in Ohio with his girlfriend, so this might be on a Windows PC. Mandalorian, ah, barrel, bringing it full circle. It, isn't that just the? But the car from Back to the Future. Yes. That was just a joke. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and he brought it back. Okay. Brought it full it's circle. Brought it back from like a minute or two ago. Yeah, that's all it takes. A hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. As opposed to those cold minutes. Hello. 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 There you go. Do you guys hear him? No, I heard I hello. Hear all I hear is hello. Oh, I hear a thing. Jesse, we don't hear you. I thought I heard a thing, but I didn't. I hear like bumping. One sec. Oh, I heard one sec. Oh, I heard that one sec. I heard that once. I gotta bump your volume up, dude. All right, hold on. All right, we brought Jesse up in the mix. Oh, won't you wait just a little bit? Oh, wait, I hear something. Oh, you should hear something. I was fucking singing. You better be hearing a lot of things. I guess what? Tanya ain't shit. Tits. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's mind blowing. Titty. Hey, you know, if you're ever feeling down, just put your hand on your heart. Feel that? That's a titty. <laughs> <laughs> you can't feel bad when touching a titty. If you say so. <laughs> Man. I will try that next time. Yeah. Just Nobody imagine that. If you're feeling down and depressed, lonely, I know a place where you can go. 22 Acacia Avenue. No, that's, that's Iron Maiden. No, just put your hand on your heart. <laughs> that's a titty. You're touching a titty. You will smile. It's worked for me. That's as loud as it's going to go. Okay, that's okay. That's I, I can bring you up. How you doing, Jesse? Um, not bad. Can I... you uh, can you hear? Oh, um... we heard, I heard. Oh, I can totally hear you. I brought you can way you up in the mix. Your real name? I can't hear anything. Oh, we got it. Okay. No. We we have an extra special guest today. We do. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, oh hardware. What think, are you doing? I think he just fell down again. Jesse. Yes. What was that? Uh, nothing. No, that was something. <laughs> that was too loud to be nothing. <laughs> It sounded like uh, you. It sounded like you took the microphone and spiked it like a football after a touchdown. <laughs> oh, it sorry. Like an uh, avalanche I, I think um, Rocket Heart's trying to get uh, her earbuds to get going here. Who? Ro- Rocket Heart. Rocket Heart. Yeah. What? You don't know who that is? Rock Hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Are your so, earbuds working? So, so Jesse, we're we, we we haven't officially. <laughs> Jesus, with the oh my god. <laughs> 
<laughs> Holy shit. Wow. We're having we're having technical difficulties here. At least it sounds fun. Okay, so while this is fascinating. <laughs> I can't even talk. Every time I try to talk, it's like it's like the microphone's falling down the stairs. You're just like, what is that? What is that? You good? They're fine. Uh, They're just we're, trying we're, to. We're, try we're trying to. Things are happening. Things are happening. Okay. Well, so you fell down, huh? What happened? Um. I fell down the stairs on my bum. Oh. Ooh. Wait, but but your girlfriend told me that uh, it was your shoulder that was messed up. Yeah, my shoulder dislocated. Hold Ooh. on a sec. You did like the, I mean, uh, hell, the amount of things that you can screw up just falling downstairs. Ooh. Doesn't work? That's like the uh, All right, we, lethal weapon. We're, we're having um, issues here. Uh, we, we tried to do a, uh, um, what do you call it, a headphone splitter. Oh, is it apparently it doesn't work is with it, the other set of headphones. Is it earbuds? Yeah, it doesn't have a line in. Uh, yeah, they're earbuds. Why don't you just put, you take the left, she takes the right. Why don't you just do that? Oh, oh, no, 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 uh, sorry. My, mine are regular headphones that has the mic on it. Hers are earbuds. Oh, okay. Um, why don't you just use speakers for, instead of the headphones? Oh, that'll be annoying, though. Yeah, that would... an echo. It would, yeah, feed, it would yeah, feed back right. through. Well, you want a laptop? Uh, What's I can... this one? Plug that in instead of your earbuds. Meryl, what the Hold fuck? on, we're, we're, we're trying something new. Hold it in, Jesse. Hold oh my good god. Wait, what did Beryl do? Beryl just sent me a thing. What didn't Beryl do? It, wait, don't be sending dick pics, Beryl. There. <laughs> Yeet! No, that's not Okay, that's much better. He said he sent you a thing. All right, it's well, it's not, it's, uh, it's not working. All right, well, that's unfortunate, but... We'll but just have to put up with Jesse being here. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, I don't know. Hold on. I mean, you don't know. <laughs> Hold on, guys. All right. We've been holding on for a while. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. How many, um, <laughs> it's pussy a... pictures are you going to send me, Beryl? <laughs> Oh, cats? <laughs> yep. See, it's funny. You said, oh, he sent you a thing, and I immediately go to penis. But, then, mean, but then when you say there, pussy, there something else. I think of a cat. <laughs> well, I, I said that on purpose. I know. And then you say, hold on to your butts, and I think immediately of Jurassic Park. So Hold on to your butts. By the way, now, are you, like, using... um? Like a, a press to talk thing. Yeah. You're you're letting it go too soon, and you're like cutting yourself off a little bit. Oh, okay, my bad. Cool. Hey, Riddle, what's going on? We're just waiting for Jesse to unfuck himself because apparently he's gone and fucked himself. So we're waiting for him to unfuck himself. At least I think that's what happened. He's muted right now. Oof! <laughs> Big oof. The biggest oof of all. I think I've seen. Yep, you're here. No, I mean um, the delay. It was good. Okay. Yeah. It sounded like 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 just basically like the last half second of everything you said was being lost. So I figured. Yeah, you were I know. Letting it go too soon. Yeah, I figured I could um because you can change the delay in. Uh, <laughs> Terry, Terry says sometimes you just gotta practice some self love and fuck yourself. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. So, you want to hear something interesting that I just thought of? I'm always uh, wanting so to hear something interesting. On my Christmas list, I had the Audio Technica 2020 PK and the uh, words. Shure SM58. More so, words. Two different model microphones. And I also had pop filters that were the right size specifically for those two microphones. Okay. And I said, this is the microphone that it's for. Okay. My mother got the Audio Technica 2020 PK mm -hmm. and the pop filter for the SM58. Oh, it's not. 
See, the, the pop filter I have is like the kind that just clamps on. T it has like a screw clamp. Yep. So it, it can go onto anything that has a stand. Right. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm an idiot and I have one of those on my old mic. There you go. <laughs> Jesse, are you good? Can we start soon? No, apparently. I, I, I've set a record for stream starting soon screen. Not that anybody gets tired of looking at Gunny, but I'd like to begin the podcast. I don't know. I think I'd rather Gibbs. Wait. Well, that would be this one. But that one says be right back, so. The noodle is rather enjoyable. The noodle, the cosmic Gibbs is pretty great, though. We're going to go back, uh, back over maybe, here. Maybe, maybe that could be your uh, tier three emote is just like an elbow noodle. <laughs> the noodle. The cosmic noodle. Jesse, could we could we begin? Hey, Jesse. Jesse, Jesse. Uh, 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 come on, man. This is all live, by the way. Just just so you know. Oh yeah, so I'm aware. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm telling him. I like. What am I doing here? Like, what is going on? List of bacon Maybe boots. Maybe oof, oof. we should just start, you and think? he'll like, come in. All right. I don't know if he's hearing me or not. That's I the thing. I don't know either. All right. Um, could you um now could you like put it in like the list critics channel that we're gonna start, and then he could just jump in when he's ready to. Cause it yes, when I, I can mean, get my mouse to work. Okay. Because I know like you know it was gonna be a surprise that that his girlfriend was gonna be joining us, and and if the technical reasons mean that she can't, that's fine, but. We need to begin, you know, like, if it's with Jesse alone, that's fine, you know? Okay. My name is apparently T. Sparkle, because he just did that for me. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm a fast typer. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, because I heard the typing, and I was like, that doesn't sound like noun typing. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, guys, let's uh, let's get rid of the music. There we go. All right, so we're, uh, we're going to dispense with the intro since it's not a gaming thing. We're going to go right over here to the list critics, and we have the correct date for once. Isn't that fantastic? Whoa. Yeah. That's like two, twice in a row I got the date right. That's sexy. Yeah. So welcome to the list critics. I'm Necro VMX. I have with me a noun, a tea sparkle, a.k.a. Kyle, and somewhere in the miasma is Jesse. We're not sure where he is right now. Yeah, that's that, that part has kind of confused me a bit, but uh, it he does exist. Surprise, Pikachu face. What? Oh, uh -huh. oh, that would be a good one, actually, Evie. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna start the show as we normally do with Tumblr gets deep from pleadedjeans.com. So here we go. Uh, let's see. So number one, it says. Uh, <laughs> people born in the 90s and it shows this like screaming guy with a tornado in the background and it says here it comes and the tornado is let tornado is labeled 30s so yeah oh Lord of. yeah big mood uh and then estranged lestrange says i realize this is about turning 30 but my brain keeps saying it's about the dust bowl happening again but in the 2030s oh why? Okay. This, is, this has been a great one. So this far. has been a well, great not... one. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I, like, I see that from Jesse. I don't. You could still be on the show. All right, whatever, man. If you want to just hang out, that's cool. Okay, so we don't have Jesse today. <laughs> Ooh, that sucks. All right, number two. Uh, Dark Water Smidge says. So I learned from my friend that coconut water can be used as an emergency blood transfusion, and of course, my first thought was, so can a vampire drink coconut water? And of course, we had this idea of these tropical vampires being horrified when these old world vampires come and are still drinking blood like some sort of monster. And then Vegan Butt replies with, "Guys, oh my God, vegan vampires." Okay. Hmm. All right. I actually think that would be kind of a funny little like skit. I don't think you can make much more out of it, though. It would be. Out. It would be kind of a funny parody of like Twilight. Yeah. Now, I think that like um, just to correct this though, I think the coconut water thing it only replaces plasma. I don't think it could replace like whole blood. 
You and your science. I know, me and my science, right? Monster High has a vegan vampire. There you go. Number three, vampiropologist. There's a lot of vampire shit here. says, 12-year-old me walks into a new friend's house. Friend, you can leave your shoes on. Friend's mom, you can call me by my first name. 12-year-old me, thank you both, but physically I cannot do that. Okay. That's that's a thing. Number four, Manat says, a girl's voice in game chat is more powerful than any of any U.S. Marine. And then, did you get mysterious images? Says, fun story, maybe. When I was younger, my brother was super duper into Call of Duty, and he's actually really freaking good at it. So one day, he gave me his mic headset and told me to talk while he was playing, and it was wild. The levels of salt that these young men produce while under the impression that a little girl is destroying them in Call of Duty is a beautiful thing. Okay, this actually happened when uh, my ex was playing competitive games, and I'd be on the holy hell the salt that's amazing barrel stop sending me shit barrel stop we're, streaming. We're, we're trying to do something here and you're you're fucking you around put yourself on do not disturb all right number five uh duchess foster got oh wait oh wow god i hate when they do this okay so it actually starts with a tweet from ahir shah who says wonderful historical crises were as boring as this one my country is on the brink of real tangible catastrophe and i'm just like on a train and uh, Duchess of Foster of Gotland says, Brexit in a nutshell. And Sleepy Fireball says, The world is so fucked, I didn't know which country this was talking about until the word Brexit. <laughs> That's real, though. I, I hate myself for laughing. That could have been any country, though, right? It could have been here. I'm so mad at myself for laughing. <laughs> Why are you mad? It's supposed to be funny. It is funny. It's You laugh so you don't cry, right? No, no. like an angry what laughter. Just said. Like, ha, 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 ha. Ah, it's so fucked up. Ah. Hilarious. All right. Uh, Hymns of Heresy. This is number six. Hymns of Heresy says, have, have y'all ever had communion bread that was just so nasty? Like, I know we have to suffer as Christians, but we do we really need to have whole wheat bread as the body of Christ? <laughs> there's more but all I, I had to laugh there and then they say my old church used hawaiian bread my standards are high and then miss weber says some old housemates of mine were in syrian orthodox at their church different members of the church took turns baking the bread that would be consecrated for the eucharist this was all well and good until one woman baked raisin bread this led to the memorable occasion no. of a rather flustered priest who had not seen the bread until that moment declaring this except for the raisins is the body of christ <laughs> potato bread oh, you that, gotta have potato that bread that would be good uh, Shira Glassman says except for the raisins oh my god Pastel Lavender says raisins are just dried grapes though and wine is his blood so really it's like a two in one shampoo and conditioner except with Jesus Jesus mm. fucking Christ I, I also Terry I also thought that most places just had those like like little wafer things I didn't realize that people were out there using actual bread but all right. Number seven, Charles Oberon says, very good trope. Cartoon characters having grown long beards to signify a lot of time has passed, regardless of how nonsensical it is for them to grow one. S- silly slacker person says, even better trope. It turns out it's a fake beard they're wearing just because. And then Painted Rocket says, absolute best trope. It turns out a comically short amount of time has passed, like five minutes or something. I mean, that's literally a joke from South Park. Your mic cut out for me at least. Oh, really? In the absolute worst time. So it was like it was the final part. Oh, absolute best trope. It turns out a comically short amount of time has passed, like five minutes or something. And that's that's galaxy brain right there. That's literally from South Park, though. They did the thing where Cartman was in a uh, like a coma for a bit. And it did like this, uh, like this montage to make it seem like a long time had passed, and then he had a beard. Turns out it was like a few. It was like a day, and the yeah, beard it was like was a like CPAP a, or something. Yeah, it was like a face warmer. I think they called it. You know. Yep. There you go. So literally, every every part of that is just a, like a quick gag from South Park. Okay, so number eight, Cloudfried says types of Christmas songs. Jesus was a baby once, and he was very cool. The big red man is coming. There's snow outside. That's good. I'm alone on Christmas and sad. Santa Claus is very sexy. Christmas trees, love them. And you know what? It's Christmas time. 
that's literally every every Christmas song falls into one of those. And and that, uh, to submit list, just DM me on Discord. That that is that is discount carols. I th- well, yeah, but that's the thing. They're categories. Like you can't name a Christmas song that doesn't fit into one of those. <laughs> Shut up. You know what I mean? They they're all. Yeah, those are all types of Christmas songs. You got them all. And I just hate that there's literally an entire category called Santa Claus is very sexy. Oh, sorry about that. My stream deck was being dumb. I was oh. like, whoa, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I was like, time? I was like, blurp, 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 blurp. Sparklebot's going crazy. All right. Uh, let's see. So, um, Captain, this is number nine. Captain Snoop says, man, the creators of Superman really named a small town Smallville and a big city metropolis, didn't they? And Grandma Puncher, and I just want to pause to point out that this person chose no. the name Grandma Puncher on, on Tumblr, says, I mean, they made a superhero named Superman, so what do you expect? And Captain Snoop says, extremely fair point. Yep. Yeah. And then EB with the uh, the Santa Claus emotes. Uh, Christmas at Ground Zero by Weird Al yet can't be put into these. Yes, he can. That would be That would be the category, you know what, it's Christmas time. There you go. And hey, Jeep Reindeer, what's going on? Christmas at Ground Zero is great. Okay, you both said things. I heard noun, but T Sparkle was a little lost in there. So, what did you say, Kyle? I said, and then there's the 12 pains of Christmas. 12 pains of Christmas? Pains yes. like I hurt here and it's pain. Yeah, yeah. I, it's I, such I, a good song. I've never heard that. Okay. Uh, number 10, Midtown 120 Blues deactive. Oh, it's just deactivated. Midtown 120 Blues says, My goal is to be completely vaporized at Disneyland so they can't take my body off the premises and pronounce me dead off-site. Uh, the Matham House says, Okay. Or bring your team of doctors and paramedics to pronounce you dead as soon as it happens so that they're stuck with it. And then Midtown 120 Blues says, I love the visual of me striding into Disneyland all smug with a confused team of doctors. Okay, I it, part of it is kind of an urban legend. There's this whole thing about Disney World and Disneyland where they say nobody has ever died in their parks. But you think about it, like they've been open for a long time. Somebody must have died, right? Like somebody must have had a heart attack or choked to death or yep. something. And there's this. This is the part that's an urban legend that they say that to to be able to say that nobody's ever died at Disneyland or Disney World that they if somebody's about to die they'll move them off site so they could say they didn't die in the park but i don't know how true that really is because there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of articles and lists and shit written by people who used to work at disneyland that tell you all kinds of shit and they've never mentioned that many many urban myths yeah number 11 uh so I hate when they do this with images. So there's a there's a there's a series of images from Phineas and Fur where it says, Whoa, Phineas, which way are you facing? Good question. Left. And the chubby nerd says, I swear to God, this show is fucking gold in every way. See, that's not Tumblr gets deep. That's just Tumblr laughs at cartoons. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's probably a myth, Jupe Reindeer, probably. Uh, number twelve, till that, or today I learned that. Today I learned that in 1916 there was a proposed amendment to the U.S. Constitution that would put all acts of war to a national vote and anyone voting yes would have to register as a volunteer for service in the United States Army. Uh, so then uh, Republicans Republicans are a hate group. It's so hard to read these names because there's no spaces. Um, it says, bring the shit back and suddenly the capitalists don't want to go to war no more. And then advanced procrastination says, bring this back because to be honest, it's just common sense. If you truly think that war is the best and only way to solve a dispute, then you must be willing to die for that cause. And the chaotic galaxy says, if someone else can die for a cause, you can too. Yeah. I don't mean to like dismiss that. I just mean to say yes. Yes. I mean, that's not dismissing that. That's like validating it. Oh, I know, but I mean, this podcast, I'm supposed to be able to react to it, but it's just like, well, yeah, that's common. Yes, yes, quite. Yes. <laughs> well, that is a reaction, though. That is that is a very real reaction. Number 13, like Niob says, the most important thing to know about the plot of Hamlet is that it's so convoluted that the main character is kidnapped by pirates, and then it's not even really a major plot point. And then uh, they reply to themselves with hashtag Hamlet spoilers. Oh. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, yeah, but you know what, EB Agent? I think that, like, uh, they say that no guest has ever died at Disneyland. I think employees don't, they don't count. I don't know. I'm not the Disneyland Corporation. <laughs> Number 14. I am. Oh, okay. Cool. Nobody's died. Okay. I'll hail the mouse. All right, number 14, Saddest Blogger says, Good evening. Does anyone remember that one Disney Channel movie where a family wins an entire house that's artificially intelligent like Siri, but as the movie progresses, the house becomes more and more strict and obsessive, and eventually it holds the family hostage? And then Slut for Food says, Nope, how was your day today? And Saddest Blogger says, Very good, it was raining, and there was a nice slug on the pavement. Slut for Blood says, Wow, or Slut, Slut for Blood, that's not even close. Slut for Food, not that either of those things make sense. Slut for Food says, wow, right on the pavement. And Saddest Blogger says, right on the pavement. And then Agent Sap says, it was called Smart House. <laughs> okay. How to lose a finger. Boop the, boop the honker. All right. Number 15. So um, who's posting this? Scarecrow Junkrat posts a, a screenshot from their phone where they ask Google, is Mr. Clean gay? And this is Google's answer. Mr. Clean is neither gay, straight, nor bi. He is asexual because sex of any kind is just too dirty for him. His first love has always been cleaning. He can't even bear to be seen in anything but clean, perfectly white clothes, so it has been his whole life. That's adequate. That is... That's a good answer. I love that that's the answer that Google gives. It's not coming from, like, Mr. Clean website. It's like Google has that right at the top there. I think Noun's, yep. Noun's about to lose it, and I love it. I was snickering. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. <laughs> he would have OCD, though. It's true. And uh, and uh, the, the the person below that, Scarecrow Junkrat, points out that the screenshot, because it was like literally one of those things where you just take a screenshot of your whole phone screen, shows that this search is Mr. Clean Gay was done at 5.38 a.m. There you go. You know what? That's the kind what? of like questions and such that I would actually yeah. do at 538. Absolutely. 100%. Okay, number 16. So this starts with a tweet from The Economist who says, America's airlines are introducing a class below economy. And Leave Me Alone says, broke as fuck, now boarding. I repeat, broke as fuck, now boarding. And then Elm Jack says, they just duct tape you to the side of the plane. <laughs> wow. We're just going to Mitt Romney it here. Oh God! You just go in a little Romney style. Mitt Romney. <laughs> well, I was making a reference to the thing where uh, he, there was an incident where he had his little dog in a cage strapped to the hood of the car, which the dog was fine, but it had diarrhea all over the car. Ew. And he had to stop, pull over like a service station, and hose the car down. So. All right, number seventeen. A uh, 5,000-year-old prosthetic eye made from a mixture of natural tar and animal fat. This incredible object was found near the city of Zabul in Iran. The world's earliest prosthetic eye, which was once painted gold, was worn by an ancient priestess who stood six foot tall. And then, uh, tw- Wow, this person's name is Twilight Sparkle Sharam. Is that you, nice. is that you Kyle? No. no. Okay. And when a six to- and when a six foot tall Persian priestess with a fucking gold eye speaks, you know you damn well listen to what she has to say. I agree. There you go. I never seen the first Mr. Clean commercial. That's interesting. Apparently, he was like Lex Luthor. So, uh, number eighteen, DQN Quality posts this honestly very impressive ASCII art of. Um, it's hard to describe, but it's a cat looking out the window of a house, and it's snowing, and it says "Yay, snow day." But what's impressive about it is the angle. It's like from a from a upwards angle. I think you may need to post it. I'm going to in just a moment. And Ida Maisel says, "Dat perspective, though." Pig Knight Warrior says, honestly, this shit is impressive. And T-Pose, to assert gayness, says, this ASCII art does perspective better than me. What the shit? And uh, if any of you guys want to see it, I am about to post it in the general chatismo. There it goes. There she blows. Yikes. Can, oh. Isn't that impressive? And can I just point out the uh, username? Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was so Noun cool. was extremely impressed. Yeah, can I just can I just pose uh, uh, just bring up T pose to assert gayness is a username on Tumblr? That's a great. That's like, a great. Yes. Has anybody yeah. ever had to assert their gayness and didn't know how to do it? Now you know. <laughs> I know someone who's done that. There you go. 
Okay, so uh, number 19, uh, Linda Tart shows a little comic strip of Batman reading the newspaper. It's got a picture of Superman. It says, Superman saves the day. He, he goes, <laughs> nerd, and he draws glasses on Superman's face. And then he goes, wait, is that Clark Kent? And then he sees that the article was written by Clark Kent. He says, did he seriously write an article about himself? And uh, the comment here is, Batman is the greatest detective that ever lived. <laughs> nerd. <laughs> wow. All right. Number 20, Dank Meme University posts a tweet from this person's name is Cum Man. Oh. If, if I had a girlfriend, I would let her take as many sips as she wanted from my Taco Bell Baja Blast soda, even though I would really prefer to drink it all myself. And then Bird and Pig Million says, Why would you censor the OP's name? Because they, they censored the, uh, the actual Twitter handle. All we have is the nickname Cum Man. And uh, Comed says women would flock to him otherwise. You need to know how cum is spelled. C-U-M. Yeah. But I just want to point out that the person on Twitter was had the name Cum Man, and the person who suggested that women might flock to this person's name on Tumblr is Comed. They might be the same person, I'm just saying. Oh. Have you ever seen them both in the same room at once? I've never even seen them in separate rooms. That's, so that's shut up. That's, I, that was, that's a that thing. Was a joke and then you that's just... a thing. No, but that means that they might not even exist at all because I haven't seen them. Fine. There you go. Uh, so number twenty-one. Oh God. You know, I it, it, Tumblr gets deep. Used to be a lot of text post now it's a lot of images so this is a series of images from the pokemon cartoon with these team rocket fuckos saying uh so uh, uh, uh i think the girl the girl's jesse right yes if you're referring to mm-hmm. us if you're referring to us why weren't we affected by the hypnosis and then uh, meowth says i'm afraid idiots are hard to hypnotize Ouch. Uh, so desi does things says, i love this beyond anything in my life Bogleach says, Jesse and James always get this kind of treatment anyway, but it's fucking priceless that they also came for Ash and Pikachu. Moon landing was faked, <laughs> says Meowth confirmed to have all of Team Rocket's brain cells. <laughs> and then uh, Darren, the mad scientist, says, I was just going to joke about the team cat being the smart one, but then I remembered that he's a Pokemon who learned English through eavesdropping and sheer force of will and is therefore a genius. Hashtag, hashtag oh shit, hashtag Pokemon. Okay, that's, yeah. I'm, That's extremely real. I've always wondered why Meowth, of all of them, that particular Meowth could speak English. I, I think I read that there was a the whole backstory where it explained it, but uh, well, AB Agent just explained it, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, that was quick. There you go. Okay, so, oh, God, where did my, where did my tab go? shit oh there we go we got it back oh that was that was actually number 21 that was the last one so out of 21 i i'm disappointed uh Same. i'm gonna give it like an 11 let's say you guys 10 i will do 12 12 all right so we got like a like a nice array there for an average of 11 okay so where is my uh, twitter thing here Oh God! I it assume started it's off weak, yeah. but it became amazing for a while, <laughs> and then it ended weak. Yeah. Yeah. I have so many windows open. I'm trying to find uh, the Twitter jokes one. All right, we'll we'll just quickly uh, do a search here. I'll find it real quick. Okay, 15 Twitter jokes everyone should read. Here we are. Number one from uh, Alex Pettijohn. I used to think coffee was a grown-up drink. Then I thought alcohol was a grown-up drink. Now I have finally achieved full enlightenment to understand that it is water that is the grown-up drink. That's true. That's actually... Not only is that true, but every step of that is true. That is actually extremely true. It's true. Facts, B. Yep. Number two uh, posts a picture of a baby climbing on something, and it says... uh, Megan here says, I just want to take a nap. That's not a joke. That's reality. I'm moving on there. That's creepy. Number three, Madison says, A real conversation I heard between two grown men at Tires Plus. Man one, getting ready to pay. Is it swipey swipe? No, it's chippy chip. Hmm. This list is... Hmm. 
degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, too. Number four, Neek says, me during morning shift. I, who the fuck closed last night? Me closing last night. This looks like a problem for the opener. That's real. That's real. What is it? Wow. They were a dick to themselves. <laughs> Chippy Chip is right. Hey, Simply Moon, how's it going? All right. Number yeah, five. Bruno. Brandon Lou says, did a photo shoot in the backyard today. <laughs> Okay, I can't describe this. I can only just post it on the Discord and have you guys look at it. It's it's pretty funny. There you go. I'll just wait for that reaction, though. Oh, my. <laughs> That's impressive, right? Yeah. The things you can do with very little, right? <laughs> it's getting funnier the more that I look at it. I know. It really is good. Oh, uh, that's great. <laughs> The umbrella. Oh, wow. All right, number six. Louis Keene says, My dad bought his laptop from a teen and refuses to remove the stickers. So, yeah, it's just typical edgy teen stickers. You got something that says Thrasher Magazine, Making Moves, something that just says Golf. It's just a bunch of, like, typical edgy teen crap on it. All that stuff that as soon as you look at it, you nearly cringe to death? Pretty much, yeah. I cringe myself inside out just looking at it. (laughs) <laughs> uh, number seven uh, Aisha R. Pandora says my daughter called me into the bathroom for an emergency only for me to find this these kids don't respect my time so they, they made the toilet bowl into like a like a character with like toilet paper rolls for the eyes a hairbrush for the hair there's like a scrubby brush for the nose and they I need po- to see this I'll, I'll post it I'll post it I'm not doing it justice <laughs> there it goes oh my That is amazing. Hey, Lox. Actually. Hey, Lox. We're we're doing something with list critics where we just read lists from the internet and uh, and kind of dunk on them and react to them and shit. All right, number this eight. Is, oh, sorry. Go ahead this now. Is extre- <laughs> this is extremely amazing. I can't. Okay. I, I mean, honestly, Go. if your if your children are doing that sort of thing, at least they're not like. I mean, it's not destructive. It's just funny. And, and this person took the time to take a picture and post it on Twitter, so they definitely appreciated it. All right, number eight. Donovan C. says, nobody. Absolutely no one. Not a single soul on this earth. Not even their mom. Influencer. A lot of you have asked about my skincare routine. Oh, no. That's true. Nobody asked. Nobody mm-hmm. cares. Mm-hmm. We interrupt this stream to bring you the important announcement. Tanya ain't shit. Oh my god, this is news. It is news. Alright, number nine. Tank Sinatra (laughs) says, My favorite part of the internet is when a millionaire tries to sell you a course that teaches you how to be happy without money. Uh, That's real. Why is this so depressingly real? That's not funny. That's just... That's just the way it is. I know. This is like a list of facts that you don't want to face. Yeah. My skincare routine is Lucky Genetics. There you go. All right, so number uh, 10, Chris Geidner says, How does a person not know that what they want at Starbucks in the year of our Lord 2019? I mean, I don't know. They have a lot of shit there. They really do. I usually... Dunkin' Donuts is better. Yes, Dunkin' Donuts is better and cheaper, but most importantly, better. I do like I Dunkin' like Donuts it. coffee quite a lot. <laughs> All right. I go for Starbucks myself. Wow. I had Starbucks today because my sister had nine dollars off. Oh, so you you got like almost half the price of the coffee off. I got a hot chocolate. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you notice the joke just sailed lazily over Kyle's head. Oh, I know. It's just like the beginning of reading Rainbow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Butterfly in the sky. <laughs> I've got blood twice as high. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, such a zoomer, says the zoomerest zoomer that ever zoomed barrel. Okay, I haven't watched Zoom since I was like... No, Zoom? no, Zoom, you're a That's zoomer. That's not at all. No, what, oh, like God. Gen, Gen Z. Oh, okay, zoomer. You're Gen Z. Oh. Like a boomer, but not. We're, oh, wow! That was <laughs> oh, okay. Shit. That that joke didn't sail lazily over Kyle's head. That was a fastball right to his face that he actively that one, dodged. Jesus, that one <laughs> gotta go fast. And it, it was like the Matrix, you know. 
Okay, you know when Keanu Reeves like bends over backwards and the bullets all fly Bullet over dog. him. Yeah. All right, number breathtaking. <laughs> number eleven. Hand Amri says, "My daughter just asked me if the word encyclopedia comes from the word Wikipedia." <laughs> Uh, this was not apparent before. I, I mean, it's the other way around, though. They're saying encyclop. Does the kid ask if encyclopedia comes from Wikipedia? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, not uh, the other way. Around. Yeah. Your mic cut out. It, it, is anybody, uh, Kyle? Is that happening to you, or is it happening to anybody in the chat? Or yeah, it it's definitely happening to me. Weird. I, so I figured that like the observation was that somebody just realized that encyclopedia. Or Wikipedia oh. just derived yeah. from Encyclopedia. Chad, how is... Am I cutting out? Or is it just it's on Discord? Discord? Because it could be Discord, or it, or it could be the microphone, or it could be Twitch. I'm trying to... If it's Discord, there's not much I can do about it. Not for... Okay, so it is just Discord. At least it's not cutting out on Twitch. Okay, good good deal, guys. Okay. Ah, damn it. Oh well. Well, I, I I'd better I'd rather it be something wrong with Discord than something wrong with my microphone, right? <laughs> but still, number twelve. Now we sound like idiots. Yeah. No, we don't. We. I could sound like an idiot. I voted for Donald Trump. There. Now I sound like an idiot. Okay. Yes. Oh, see, Barry, <laughs> it's it's not because that's <laughs> see. Barrel, you set the dog off with your pedagogy. It's okay, it's okay. He'll use only English letters. It's okay. It's okay. Well, I know, I know, I know, I know. Gib- Gibbs is a list critic. All right. He caused the gun to go off. Jeez. We know what it is. My sister's here. Number 12, Sean Massiel says, Hallelujah is such a beautiful song. I still remember the first time I heard it in the soundtrack to Shrek. Same. Oh <laughs> Yeah. That's funny as fuck. John, why are we so old? Oh, that's great. Hey, it's Gibbs. True, no, Gibbs, Daryl, get away from loud. there. Get away from there. I mean it. All right, number thirteen. Uh, Myra here says, "Just because I loved you at one point does not mean I will always love you." I am not Whitney Houston. I there couldn't hear half of that. So shit. Just because I loved you at one point does not mean I will always love you. I am not Whitney Houston. I see. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, oh God. No, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> uh, thank you for that information, EB agent. We knew that she's not around it anymore. All right, number fourteen. Royce says, "Getting a call from my dad. Dad, hey son, just wanted to let you know that Grandma Fell will buy the ingredients for her famous chocolate cake, and she's not gonna make it. Oh no. Yeah, I'll be making it instead. Oh, I thought you meant because she's dead." Jesus Christ. That is dark. I love it, but boy, is that dark. Again, I'm laughing, but I hate myself for laughing. I, I mean, you as you should, laugh and hate yourself for laughing. Both of those things are acceptable. <laughs> oh, my God. Shrek the musical. I thought Shrek was already a musical. There's a lot of songs in it, at least. All right, number 15. Actually. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Now just push your glasses up and said, actually, let's hear it. No, I was reading chat. It's actually wonderful. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying, actually, it's not a musical because of some yeah, reason. actually. <laughs> All right, number 15. Gabriella Tully Claymore says, me sending an email. Hello. Thanks. All the best. Thank you so much. All that has like 50 exclamation points after it, so. I don't know. That, oh. that, that ended not with a bang, but with a whimper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it started shitty, it ended shitty, but there was some good shit in the middle. So out of fifteen, I'm, I'm gonna give it like a like a nine. What do, what do you guys? What's your fi- opinions? Mm, out of fifteen, I'll give it eleven. Eleven. I'm thinking ten. Eleven. Le- eleven. Okay. Ten. Ten. Sea Sparkle says ten so sadly. Ten. It's like the most depressed 10 ever. I have another one here from Pleated Jeans. It's go ahead and try to disagree with these statements. You cannot. And there's 15 of them. So 15 statements that apparently it's impossible to disagree with. 
I take that as a challenge. <laughs> challenge accepted. Yeah, challenge accepted. Target acquired. These are all from Twitter as well. Number one, Andrew Stu says, listen up, everyone. We're changing the century thing. From now on, 18th century means the 1800s. 17th century is 1700s and so on. We're not doing the weird subtraction thing anymore. We're changing it. It's over. I agree. That would make things easier, right? Yeah, yes. I mean, it yeah. makes sense the way it is, but still, it would make things easier. It, to, make, to... it makes sense from an academic standpoint, but we not academics. Yeah. So, it really do be like that. Number two, Jacob here says, anyone who is a pleasure to have in class has an anxiety disorder now. That's true. You just cut out. Oh, yeah, damn we it. heard up until anxiety. Well, that was it, an anxiety disorder. Anyone who is a pleasure to have in class has an anxiety disorder. I think I agree. I don't think you can disagree with that. I think, it, I think be... everybody has an anxiety disorder to be. I mean, yeah. yeah. All right, number three. Uh, Liv here says, People from high school get so bitter when you unfollow them on social media. Like, sorry, Stacy, I haven't talked to you in two years, and I don't really care to see how you've evolved from a bitch to a bitch who works for a pyramid scheme. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I can't specifically relate to that because I don't know any bitches from high school that work for pyramid schemes, but I know many people who've been through that, so that's real. Yeah, that it doesn't apply to me, but I'm sure that it is a thing. It definitely applies to at least two people that I know. Oof. All right, then it counts. That we, we agree then. Gibbs, get away from there. I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> Number four. Dang it, Bobby. Dang it, Bobby. Everybody's okay. everybody's coming by. Dick, Peter, Rod Johnson, even old John Thomas is coming. All right. Uh, <laughs> P- POTUS2020 says, if you unplug the Wi-Fi box for one second, the whole house act like they about to die. You'll see the people come out of rooms you ain't never seen before. Agree. That's real. Yes. Yeah. Why why are you unplugging it? What do you some men just want to watch the world burn, huh? Help you just yep. like destroyed everything that I was doing ever. Barrel, I refuse to believe that you don't have pyramid schemes in Sweden. You probably just call them something else. They might be uh, multi level marketing schemes. It, yeah. You know. Um, yeah. So it's the like, pyramids it, are It's illegal. not a pyramid, it's a triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, think- Tally, what's good? I could unplug my uh, router right now and then still have internet for about 10 minutes. Nice. Don't do that, though. That's good. Yeah, don't yeah. do not do it. All right, number five. Jake here says, Girls named Megan are the worst because there are infinity ways to spell Megan, and every girl named Megan is the kind of girl who gets extremely offended when you spell her name wrong. Uh, it's Megan, dumbass. Okay, sorry, Mugwenst. Please forgive me and also leave disagree and i think whoever wrote that really needs to like work out their issues with their megan megan with their what you're cutting yourself off again their megan oh yeah well apparently this person has known a few megans and it hasn't been a good experience for them i'm gonna increase the delay on when i cut out i've only known one person named megan and she was fine so i think we all like we all disagree with that one there are two Megans in my RA staff. Okay. But do they spell their names differently? No, but then we have like five Megans that live in the building, and all of them are spelled differently. But do they get upset if you spell it wrong? Yep. Oh, wow. Well, maybe it's true for the younger generation more than us old fucks. That's real. Number six, Anna M says, In my experience, adulthood is mostly piling stuff up on surfaces and then eventually having to clean off those surfaces. That's at least 30% of adulthood. I heard part of that. Oh, God. All right. In my experience, adulthood is mostly piling stuff up on surfaces and then eventually having to clean off those surfaces. And eventually what? I'm not saying it again. Okay, it I'm basically, not, not... it was like adulthood is piling your shit up on surfaces. And then cleaning and yes, it off. It's true. Yes, yeah. it's true. That's 30% at least. Yes. All right, number seven. Is your dad really your dad? Oh, I'm sorry, this is Kelly saying this. Is your dad really your dad if he doesn't say who after talking about any of your friends, even if he's known them for literally seven years? <laughs> true. 
Why is that so real? Uh, <laughs> that is. You know, there, are, there are times I go to visit friends, uh-huh. and then I'm like, "Hey, can you give me a ride to so and so's?" And then they give me a ride to a house that's on the other side of town, and I'm like, this "Where is are a... we going? We're going to so and so's." And I'm like, "No, no, this is not how you get there." <laughs> hey, Clint, what's going on? All right, number eight, uh, Bye Bye says, I'm at the point in my life where I check my email as part of my social media lineup. Huh? That's real? I do that. I'm, I mean, that was always the thing? That's not a, a take of any kind. You check your email. Yeah, that's like, that's dumb. That's That's like saying, I wake up in the morning. <laughs> like, Come on now. All right, number nine. uh, Sierra Mist here says, I just want to say I'm so thankful for fucking potatoes. They are literally good in any form. French fries, smack. Mashed potatoes, smack. Baked potatoes, smack. Tater tots, smack. Skillet potatoes, smack. Name a form of potatoes that isn't good. I'll wait. I mean, yeah. I'm staying silent because I can't think of anything. But they I, failed to mention baked potato soup. Yeah, but that's also great. They may not have named anything every single because there's so many different ways of doing it. But like literally oh. any way that you cook a potato, it's it's probably going to be good unless you you know fuck it up. And then it's not the potato's fault. Okay, wait. You know what? Clint brings up a good one: potato salad. I don't like potato salad either. I think I've had potato salad and I thought it was good, but it's been a while. I don't, you know, yeah, cold potato and mayonnaise doesn't really do it for me. Um, EB Agent keeps wanting us to comment on potato suppository, which is not a thing. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Terry brings up a good point. He likes that, so probably I like that. Oh, there you go. You guys are, like, in sync on that, huh? We're we're twin. Very similar. Oh, okay, there you go. Is your brother from another mother, huh? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Number 10. And sister from another mister. Maroon here says, If Bohemian Rhapsody starts playing and the person you're with doesn't start singing aloud and at least attempt the different voices, you really need to leave them alone. You just don't need that kind of negativity in your life. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Noofy. Look at what Clint just said in the chat. Oh, my. That's, uh... Hmm. That's certainly a thing, as Barrel would say. Hmm. That That's is a, happened. That is certainly something. All right, that number happened in the chat. Yeah. Number eleven, Jody Cap says, "Girls in the bathroom at the bar. Oh my God, you're gorgeous. Here, use my makeup. Screw your ex. You're so much better than him. Add me on Snap. I love you forever." Girls outside the bathroom. If you bump into me one more time, I'm going to fight you. I'm gonna have to defer th- to now on this one. I think that's probably true. Okay. I'm deferring to you completely. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know why. <laughs> I'm not a girl. That's, I don't know why. That's pretty much true, but yeah. I, you know what? I, I'm not a bar going person. Yeah, you're so. not into club, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, number 12. Kevin Farzad says, The most important thing I've learned in life, and I can't stress this enough, you got to make a salad in a bigger bowl than you think. Yes. I found that also applies to like baking. Like if you're going to mix stuff you, and you get your mixing bowl out, put it away and get the bigger one than that. Like go one size up from what you think is good. It's true. All right. Number 13. Not Sarah says, friend. So how are you? Me. I'm well, thanks. What's new? Not much. Well, what have you been up to? Why are you doing this to me? Wow. That's happened. Yeah. There was a prank phone call on, on the Howard Stern show like that where Richard called up some lady and just like, hi, how are you? She'd be like, I'm good, and you? I'm good, well, how are you? And it went on for like five minutes like that. I hate to be the like asshole that. about this, but it's cutting out like crazy. Uh, well, I, I can't do anything about it. I, I know, I know. I was it's, just letting it's literally you know, an man. issue with Discord, and you know what? I got three bars here, though. Are you, do you guys all have green bars? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, solid green bars. Yeah, Discord is just an asshole. I'm just yeah. saying that that's yeah. the reason why I can't respond is because okay. Discord is doing a thing. I mean, I mean, if anything, you could listen through Twitch. I mean, there's a little stream delay, but at least you would hear everything. 
but i don't know i don't know if we want to i don't know if we really want to do that because it's like a good 10 seconds of stream delay it'd be like that joke about uh you ever say something trivial to someone and they don't hear you so you say it louder and they still don't hear you and pretty soon you're screaming that tree is large I don't. And I just suddenly don't react anymore, and it's just yeah. weird. <laughs> I don't know what any of that is, Terry. PTT voice activated. What? Oh, um, I'm, I'm not on push to talk. talk. I'm not on push to talk. I can't be because I'm looking at like ten different windows here. I gotta yeah. like read the chat and read the lists, and you know, so I, I can't do push to touch. I don't think it's a, push to touch. Push to oh my. ladies. <laughs> My voice gate is literally set as low as it could possibly be. Like, it's literally zero, Terry. I have an idea. Oh, my. That's so, amazing. Does it have to do with potatoes in the butt? No. Oh, okay. I good. was going to say, I could try plugging my phone into the mixer and then have you call me. And if that works, then you'll come through my mixer. And as long as you have cell service, we don't have to worry about the damn Discord issue we keep having. How would I be broadcasting your voice then? Well, and now, if you mute yourself in Discord, uh huh, then you would still be sending your audio through the phone and capturing our audio through Discord. That's not how he's capturing the audio. I well, I I mean. No. I'm really bad at words right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. No to all of but that. But anyways. Everything sounds sexual. Because everything is sexual. It is, though. And I'm eating junior mints. <laughs> Let's just try to Lame. soldier on. Um, I don't know. I think it's... <laughs> I, I think it's a... You know what? Hold on a second. Because I, I had this thought. Ever, previous to this... Because we didn't have this issue last time, right? Slightly. We, we didn't really have this issue. And uh, you and, and AJ had boosted the server and it led to some sort of like a uh, higher quality voice thing. Could have been. And I was wondering if like the higher quality is causing that issue. Do you want us to unboost your server? No, I don't want you to do that. I was just thinking that maybe <laughs> I need to look at the settings and adjust them. Maybe. Uh, I'll just look at it really quickly here. Cause I have no other ideas. I, I'm just going to look and see if there's anything that I can... Uh, uh, By the way, when I'm talking, am I, um, am I cutting myself off again when I unpush to talk? Not as bad as before. Nope. Not as bad, but it's still doing it. A, li a little bit, yeah. Okay, I'm going to increase the delay then. There you go. All right, I'm just, we're just going to soldier on. Oh, dear. Okay, so Gary from Teen Mom says here, Me at 16. Leave me alone, Mom. I'm an adult. Me at 23. Mom, if you don't come to the dentist with me, I'll end my shit. It's real. Oh. <laughs> Two sparkles, like, in the in the between there. So he's like, oh, so that's how it's going to go down. <laughs> yep. All right, number 15. Dana says, I'm going to be 89 years old in a retirement home and still be traumatized when I see back-to-school commercials. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> That's so true, though. I, I'm, I'm, look, next year I'm going to be 40 hey, years old, girl. and when I see those commercials, I'm like, <laughs> shut up. Nitro, what's good? Let's just keep making poop jokes. I all right, something's happening. Okay, at, saying hello. Hello, Nitro. Out of fifteen, what say you guys? Seven. No good wow, beats. That was harsh. Yeah, that was harsh. I was gonna say like maybe twelve. I was gonna say thirteen because there was only like two that I really was like a little iffy on. I, I agree. It was with like you. okay. He's yeah. like, it's like fuck this list. I don't, I'm too <laughs> young for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" I don't know. It, the, what is this? I'm like, "Fuck this shit, I'm out." <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, it's funny because I have this like very um, 
not innocent, but very reserved image of Kyle. So when I hear him curse, it's amazing. Muno, I still have that dream in my 30s. I'm so, I'm so the, the, sorry that you're going to be cursed the first, with that. The first day of school evil dream that nobody likes. And like, oh, yeah. you're, you're fucking naked or like you have no idea what your schedule is and shit like that. I've never had the naked school dream, but I had to get lost in the school dream. Oh, God. Where you literally I... don't know where you are and you're wandering yeah. around. And, yeah. I remember having a dream about getting lost at my middle school when I was, like, five. Wait, so you you weren't having it five years later. You were having it ten years early. Yep. That's weird. Because That's... the uh, the school is literally... It looks like a castle on the outside. Oh, so you and had these images in your head of what it was going to look like on the inside. Yep. Okay. There you go. All right. I usually get like the naked and mid-final and lost dream at the same time. And then all your teeth fall out. <laughs> you think. All right. Uh, I got another one from Pleated Jeans. This will be the last one from Pleated Jeans. It's called, If You're Going to Leave a Comment, Swing for the Fences. So this is just a collection of really good comments left in various places. It's There's 20 of them. So we'll just start, as normally, with number one. So this starts with a tweet from Forbes magazine. It says, DC Films still doesn't know what to do with Superman. The studio reportedly is unsure how to make the character relevant to modern audiences. The comment here from Grace Seeger says, Yeah, there really is no way to make the story of a space refugee adopted by farmers in middle America who later becomes a journalist and a hero focused on writing injustices and thwarting the schemes of a selfish billionaire relevant to modern times. Oh. Grace, could you get hired by Warner Brothers, please? <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, but I wanna... also, wow, that was a lot of work. It was. I was trying to say it quickly because I'm like, if I lollygag on this, you guys are going to miss half of what I'm here saying, apparently. But um, it seems to be happening in clusters, I guess. But anyway, um, yeah, I would want to see that Superman. And then your teeth go gray. <laughs> Why not try something else on your plate? All right, number two. Is a, is a YouTube comment on a video with Mark Zuckerberg. Tyler Long here says, he looks like he's constantly resisting the urge to blink horizontally. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm good with that. All I'm right. okay with that one. Bonka says, that wasn't a swing, that was a pneumatic thrust. A pneumatic pelvic thrust. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Number three is also from a YouTube video, which is why I season my cutting board, not my steak. The comment here from Marl Cologne says, I prefer to season my mouth, eat the steak raw, and then light myself on fire. That's one way of doing it. Yeah. I won't comment yeah. on if it's the right way of doing it, but it That's, is one way. It is a way. Okay, then. Yeah. Pelvic thrust is how I claim to communicate. That is true, but only when I'm expositing. Uh, number four, um, <laughs> so it starts with a text conversation. Expository spell <laughs> pelvic thrust. <laughs> I think we killed Jip Reindeer. I don't like being an adult. Yup, I told you. You remember how you told me to put, put me in this world and you could take me out? Take me out. <laughs> 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 I mean, I feel like that sometimes. Yeah. Who mood. doesn't? Who doesn't? All it's right. <laughs> Number five. So <laughs> there is a. This is from a YouTube comment. I have no idea who the woman is in the uh, in the video. It's, it says it's from Inside Edition. Tony Montani here says she looks like a mix of Kim Kardashian and Buzz Lightyear. And I guess to give this uh, some actual. Uh, fucking uh, context here. I'll put it in the Discord so you can see what she looks like. Oh, EB agent oh. apparently saw that one. There you go. She does look <laughs> exactly like a mixture of Kim Kardashian and Buzz Lightyear. God damn it. <laughs> to infinity and bed, bath, and beyond. No, so <laughs> All right, number five. Um... God, it's a picture of these two guys that I can only describe as douchebags. The one on the left looks like he 
he's like a pro wrestler on his way to a Final Fantasy convention, and the guy in the right looks like if Guy Fieri was somehow a little bit more Guy Fieri. <laughs> and uh, Travelicious says, I feel like this is what would happen if Pokemon gym leaders were real. And just to um, give you uh, give you the context, I am going to post that in the Discord as well. <laughs> These statements have me losing How do you get it so much. More hard? Guy Fieri than Guy Fieri himself. <laughs> well, go ahead, look at the general chat, and you'll see. Shit, that's like what Guy Fieri evolves into when you level him up enough. Yes. Oh no. All right, number seven. Uh, so. <laughs> Is this from a news post? This is this just in ISIS flag spotted at a gay pride parade. And uh, this person says, A CNN mistaking dildos and butt plugs for Arabic script is arguably the most apt metaphor for political discourse in America. Because that's what the flag is. It's literally pictures of sex toys on the flag. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then. Poor Kyle. We're corrupting you one day at a time. (laughs) <laughs> it is a classic it is a classic all right number eight here the monkey's paw here on reddit says i wish for the ability to switch between normal site and site that makes me see all the people that want to have sex with me and then penguin of evil comments granted you now have the ability to close your eyes so hang on the original poster was the monkey's paw mm-hmm. oh, oh wait no i'm sorry the the subreddit is the monkey's paw ah okay the uh, the username here is I'm a dope brownie. Okay. Oh. So they want to switch between normal site and site that makes you know, only see people that want to have sex with them, and that's like, you know, the, you get roasted. Clo- just, just close your okay. eyes. Just close your eyes. I, I I would be okay with that, a little bit I think, but yeah. I'm wondering how that in monkey's paw. I guess that's a subreddit where you just. You, you make a wish, and then people give you, like, shitty versions of the wish, I guess. <laughs> like how that would backfire like crazy. Yeah. Okay. Number nine. Uh, so this is from, it looks like YouTube. Be attractive. Got it. Quick follow-up. Can anyone give some advice on how to be attractive? Don't be unattractive. I'm just trying to figure out how someone named I fap to turkeys can be a good judge of what is and is not attractive. <laughs> Because I didn't say the usernames, and I really should have. The first person was Rolled Roll. The second person's name was I Fap to Turkeys. And this is actually Reddit now that I realize that. So Pap Chop says, I'm trying to figure out how someone named I Fap to Turkeys can be a good judge of what is and is not attractive. And then they get a comment from I Come on Hamsters who says, Heard you was talking shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, the I Fap to Turkeys has 5,000 upvotes and a Reddit silver from that. Shit. <laughs> nice. Oh, okay. I think we killed Noun. Are you alive, Noun? I am kind of alive. Mm. Aren't we all? All right, number 10. So this is a, a tweet from PETA who says, We saw Pokemon Go as a teachable moment for how people should treat real animals. And then Gianni here says, Kidnapping them and forcing them to fight? That's very real, yeah, though. Yeah, I mean, PETA like has been it... doing it wrong for a long time. Yeah. If you want to know how to animal rights, they're a good example of how not to. Clint wants to know if Noun can maintain her composure after that last one. Does that make her a pro Noun? Hey, if I could be a pro okay. me, you know get paid Clint, for being me, that'd be great. Yeah, like, but but pro Noun. Like it's it's a silly pun. Like oh my. we we, we don't the first we time that's ever been we, made. We don't have Jesse here for some reason that I don't understand, but uh, we have Clint to make jokes like that. Okay. Oh my! You really, you really spent a hundred channel points just to say "Oh my." You know, a hundred well, channel points is not difficult to earn. No, it 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 happens in a matter of minutes, really. Yeah, and if you don't modify any of those prices, you're probably gonna get a lot of highlighted messages. And eh, I don't really care. I li- Okay, number 11 here. Uh, Casey here on Twitter says, That Xbox 360 racism was so potent it had me on Google looking up definitions of what I'd just been called. 
I was playing Halo 3, and a dude called me a moon cricket. I dropped the controller just to look that joint up, because I ain't never heard that before that day. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know they had Xbox 360 in the 1940s. That is a slur from yesteryear. Wow. I don't want to look it up, but I want to look well, it up. it's a slur against black people. Right. That's all it is. I don't know why that phrase is attached in any way to black people, and I kind of don't want to. I know, and it's actually yeah. like kind of a that could be a cute username. Yeah, like it sounds like a like a, like an indie band or something. Yeah, or just like somebody's live journal but, username. But, but don't but instead, don't don't name your band that. Otherwise, you're gonna have some very interesting people show up at your shows. None of <laughs> none of them will have hair. All right. <laughs> Number 12, there are a pro... Okay, so this is a... Um, this is actually a quote, uh, a comment, about. I got a quote from Alexander Hamilton speaking to Thomas Jefferson. There are approximately 1,010,300 words in the English language, but I could never string enough words together to properly express how much I want to hit you with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I like it. Number 13, uh, this is also on Reddit, uh, Mycin Anthrop- Anthropos says, The father of microbiology, Antoine Van Leeuwen Hook, was the first to examine semen under a microscope immediately after ejaculating in his wife. And then explained, like I'm an otter, says, the daddy of microbiology. Basically. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that a solid okay. It's oh. Not- oh. <laughs> It's not even a full okay, it's just an O. Just O, yeah. Number 14, uh, so this is uh, uh, starts with some guy named Cooper Franklin on Twitter. says, Wendy's needs to get rid of that square burger. It seems a little too artificial. And of course, because they summon the demon, they get a reply from Wendy's who says, Unlike the supernatural circle shape that hamburgers come in when you pick them off the vine. It's one of those things that, like, it takes a second for yeah. you to <laughs> realize. I, I gotta ask you guys an, an opinion here. Do you think that, like, the whoever runs Wendy's Twitter, do you think it's, like, one person, or do you think it's, like, a team of people? I think it's a team. Mm. It has to be a team. I too, always assume it's, it's too active team. to be just one person, right? It's gotta yeah. be at least, like, five or six people. Unless that's their job, like, 24-7. Well, of course, of course it's their job, but they're always replying. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> They wake up in the middle of the night and they're like checking Twitter. They start roasting Just people. Yeah. All right, number fifteen. So um, this is uh, on on uh, Reddit. Uh, so that one time tickle says, "Is the beak okay?" I just want to remind Kyle before we start this that there is a bird called a tit. <laughs> what? You there didn't, is. Yeah, there's a bird called a tit. There's I also a bird. You didn't know that. There's also a bird called a booby. So. Blue-footed boobies, yeah. even. Yeah, blue-footed boobies. But they're two different birds. A tit and a booby are two different birds. But anyway, this person asks, is the beak of a tit called a nipple? And uh, chair edit, chair it edit says, be. perhaps. It really should be. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, number 16. Uh, wrinkled jorts. Here says, some friends and I got kicked out of an otherwise empty Denny's at 4 a.m. for repeatedly switching back and forth between two tables along the wall and acting confused when the server asked about it. We weren't even drunk, just bored college students. That will oh. happen. I'm surprised they got kicked out for that. Yeah. It's such a... It's, it, it's, weird. It's, it's so... like It doesn't hurt anybody. It's not like they were doing anything bad, but okay. You'd think they'd catch them at it, too? Maybe maybe they were frustrated that they didn't catch them at it, and that's why they booted them out. <laughs> okay. So, uh, number 17. It, it starts with the headline of an article that says, Twitter is sharing the things you could say while at Chuck E. Cheese and during sex. Rubba Duck here says, Why are you crying? <laughs> And Blue Coat Hanger says, this one deserves to be in the best comments once that new guy drops in one, about once a week. <laughs> Why are you crying? Oh, that's funny. That's great. Okay. Number 18. Uh, this is a tweet from Giovanna who says, guys, it finally happened. Some guy at the gas station just said to me, you are really pretty. And I looked at him dead in the eyes and said, if I'm so pretty, then why don't you pay for my gas? And now I have a full tank. Whoa. And, 
And then Cyan Tooth says, uh, this belongs on the list of things that didn't happen so hard, they unhappened things that did. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take things that never happened. <laughs> that's oh, good. that's good. I like it. Okay, it's real good. All right, number nineteen. Uh, so number nineteen. Somebody is selling this on like some store. It says Magna Fine Glass. I just want to say that again. Not magnifying. Magna Fine Glass. And they're selling it for six hundred dollars. The uh, shut up. The comment says, "Hey, baby, are you a lens? Because you are magnifying." No, just no. Everything, everyone, shut up. Redacted. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, that hit. That didn't happen so hard that it unhappened things that did happen. Right. Oh my god, that's real good. Okay. All right, and number 20, Red Tree here says, I wish I had a job where I could afford so many capital O's. I can only afford to buy one a month, and I've just wasted it. And then Green Sushi replies, and I just want to say that every capital in this, every O in the sentence is capital. How foolish of you. Okay. Weak. Weak That one hit real hard. Yeah. Um, Some of these were really good, though. Hell yeah. I think my favorite one uh, out of all of these, though, had to be I Fap to Turkeys, that whole that whole odyssey there. Same. And then I Come on Hamsters coming in there with I Heard You Was Talking Shit. <laughs> That's the yes. one for me. <gasps> Magnifying glass. Oh, there was a hyphen in it, too, Barrel. Yeah. <laughs> something like something Boomhauer would have said. Yeah, mag- magnifying. No, it would have been Boomhauer's brother would have said that. Okay, uh, out of 20, uh, 15, I'm going to say. What, what, what y'all, what y'all say rolling 15 with? I, yeah, 15 is what I said. 15. 15. I think I'll go with the same. Okay. Maddox Scarecrow sent me uh, a couple lists here. Uh, I got a top 100 list. Uh, I got, oh, wow. Yeah, I got Maddox uh, top 100 songs of the 2010s, top 100 songs of the oh, decade. Oh, little bit super straight. Yeah. And we got uh, his top 10, well, top 20 best games of the decade. Which are you? Let's go with best game. We're going we're gonna to go, we were going to do, we're going to do both of them, but I was going to ask which did you want to do first? Want to do the games list first? Games. Yes. All right. All right. So this is according to Manic Scarecrow, who I, I think is in the chat somewhere. Uh, top 10 best games of the 2010. So uh, number 20, Diablo 3. Um, you're aware of what top means, right? Yeah, I was gonna say that's that's a really good game. Like Diablo three, wasn't it kind of a mess? Um, it started out a mess. It definitely started out a mess. Yeah. But it's actually gotten really, really good. Oh, they got it under fun control. To play with other people. Hmm. Yeah. Okay then. Uh, number nineteen is WWE two K seventeen. I I think that uh, one's largely dependent on which console you have it on though. Yeah, I, and I wouldn't know a thing about that. Well, I heard the Switch port was like a like a travesty. But okay. Uh, number number 18 is Dishonored. Dishonored was really good. I really need to see a full playthrough of that. Dishonored is... Oh, maybe I'll stream it. Dishonored is kind of like if Thief and Bioshock had a baby together and that baby got jizzed on by Skyrim. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number 17 is Bastion. I liked Bastion. It wouldn't make my top 20 games of the decade list, but it, it was good. I thought Bastion was amazing. Never heard of it. You know, it was it, <gasps> it was an indie game where it was like an uh like a action game where you know, you're just like killing lots of enemies, but the the gimmick is there's this narrator with this deep gravelly voice that narrates everything you do. And he sounds very, uh, anyway. <laughs> He's your daddy. No, but it's, uh, it, it's a good game. I wouldn't put it in the top 20, but it's a good game. Number 16, Fallout 4. I mean, I... Uh, mm. yeah. 
I'm I'm listless toward <sighs> Fallout games in general. I, I, me, me too. Me too. Barrel says Bastion's story was a mess. I I think it was supposed to be kind of abstract. Barrel. I don't think the story of Bastion was meant to really be understood all that well. That music was the shit. The though, music I was agree. great. Yeah, the soundtrack was the best part of it. Uh, number fifteen, Dark Souls three. Okay, I mean that's that's fair. That's a good one. That's fair. Uh, number fourteen, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's interesting because like Ubisoft kind of like did a thing with Assassin's Creed where they just sort of releasing them like crazy, and they were all just like in that thing where they were kind of like good but not great, and then they decided we're gonna release a good one every other year and a terrible one on the off years. <laughs> Odyssey wound up being one of the good ones, but there there were some shitty ones like that. What was that one with the melted faces? I forget, but. Oh well. Am I? Am, am, are you guys not hearing me or something that nobody's oh, saying? I'm anything? Hearing oh, okay, you. okay. I'm just I was just, to you. okay. Uh, number thirteen is Injustice. Um, I mean, yeah, Injustice is great. I personally would have put Injustice two on there, but Injustice is great. I mean, it's got a great story. The graphics are good. It's a solid fighting game. I enjoyed it. I played okay. through two. Never played through one. Oh, okay. Uh, number 12 is Dead Rising 3. I, I don't care. Dead Rising. I don't uh, even think I've seen it. I'm over the whole uh, let's just kill as many zombies as we can genre yeah. of games, you know? We all know that genre peaked with I made a game with zombies in it. Welcome to my game. All right. Uh, number 11 is Sonic Mania. That's a good one. Mm, yes. That's a super good okay. one. I'm going to have to take you guys' word for it. I haven't played it. I honestly don't care to because I'm so hard over, over it. Sonic. I'm way over yeah, Sonic. I've it, been over Sonic for... And you know, like every time a new Sonic game comes out, people are like, oh, but we swear this one's good. And I'm like, but I don't care. It could be great. I just have no interest. No, that's totally understandable. I'm just yeah. saying that this new one, it's real good. It, it lo- I saw it and it looked like... That's the Sonic game they should have released for the anniversary, not like that Sonic 06 crap. Yep. What mm-hmm. would you do if I went back and played every single bad Sonic game? You'd be doing that for quite a while. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I would start I mean, with Sonic 06 and uh, um, Sonic Unleashed. I think you'd have to go back further than that. No. So how far back are we talking? Because uh, I already played through Heroes. It's not, well, Sonic Heroes is probably the first one that I was like, oh, this ain't good. So I don't know. And, <laughs> and we don't talk Chris, about Chris that. answered your question. Where he said, What would you do? Chris said he'd laugh at you. You just cut out again. Oh, dear. Chris, Chris look said, look Chris at the chat. Chris laugh at you, Kyle. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um... Yeah, I don't know. I I try to play games that I enjoy on Twitch. Every once in a while, I will play something shitty, but I I couldn't do a project like that where I'm playing like a whole bunch of shitty games back to back. I would not yeah. not be having fun. Um, number ten is Mario Kart Seven. Uh, yeah, that's, um, yeah, sure. It's I'm good. not sure because I played the original Mario Kart and I loved it, but I haven't played it any since. You haven't played like any of the sequels. No. Wow, not even like where it's at. Nah, man, Mario Kart 64. No, that just was the Mario, shit. Kart Mario Kart Omniness. I mean that that, that was a good one too. I mean they were all kind of good. I mean they haven't like really done a like a shitty Mario Kart. There's nothing like getting together with three friends and running around in Luigi's Mansion and Bomb Blast or Shine Thief and just being a complete dick. <laughs> <laughs> Dick. All right, number nine is Dragon Age Inquisition. I haven't played this. Um, I only played like the first Dragon Age and all of its expanse engine shit. Um, if they ever stream, no less. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that was not my first rodeo with it. But like, I, I, I bought Dragon Age two on Xbox once, but I never like played it. And then I was like, maybe I'll get it on Steam and play it on there because I really like the, the, you know, the the Steam versions are way better than the console versions. And it's like it's not on Steam. And I'm like, I don't really want to go to another storefront and have like another program. You know what I mean? It's, it's bullshit. But uh, there. Um, okay, so number eight is Super Mario Odyssey. Um, I don't have the system, 
didn't get to play it. Seen it streamed a bunch of times. Looks dope. No complaints. It yeah. looks amazing. Looks dope. You know, I'm actually getting Super Mario Odyssey again from someone who's interested in a game that I'm looking to sell. Oh. So I could stream it sometime from the beginning, even though it wouldn't be blind. There you go. Oh, that'd be fun. It doesn't have to be blind. I mean, I stream lots of games that I'm not doing blind, and that works out well. Number seven is Guacamelee 2. Um, loved it. <laughs> loved Guacamelee. Loved Guacamelee 2 even more. Both great games. Agreed with that. Oh, number six is Injustice 2. I mean, that is that is very high up. I mean, I liked Injustice 2 a lot, but goddamn. No input? Haven't played those games? Yeah. Number five is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I mean, yeah. I don't have the system and everything, but like Smash Brothers is always kind of like good, you know, and like it's always like the best one is always like whatever the latest one to come out is. Yeah, you can always yep. kind of fall back on that. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's gotten to the point where Smash is like it's it's a game, but it's also like a cultural event at the same time. Because like, now at this point, there's a stupid amount of characters in it. So ultimate is ultimate, says Riddle. There you now go. there's. Now there's an infighting in the fandom over like who should be added next. Well, I'm sure whoever it is, it'll be an interesting choice. Um, number four is Grand Theft Auto V. I, I mean, sure, why not? I, I don't play these. I don't I, ha- have any interest in Grand Theft Auto. It just to be on it. I be get honest, bored. The game, yeah, to be honest, the game is interesting. There's a lot of interesting things to do in the game, but yeah. I give literally zero fucks about it. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't know. I get bored with games like that. Uh, number three is Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds. I mean, if you're going to pick one Zelda game, that's a pretty good choice. I loved A Link Between Worlds. Oh, that was a yeah. good one. Uh, yeah. I mean, on the 3DS, that was that was really, really good. Yeah, I 100%ed um, that in a week. Nice. Number two, put it down. <laughs> number two, Skyrim. I mean, we're still playing it. You know, it came <laughs> out. It came out in 2011. It's eight years. We, we're still playing it. I stream it twice a week. It. It. I mean, Elder Scrolls yeah. is is like Smash Brothers in the sense that it's like an event when one comes out now. So absolutely. Wind I find wa- it funny. Wind Waker <laughs> didn't come out this decade, Riddle. I, was I find it funny GameCube. how many of the games in this list you've played within the last year on Twitch. That's how it'd be, huh? And number one <laughs> is a game that I played in the last year on Twitch, Dragon Quest Eleven. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can't disagree. I mean, I, if I had to, like, if you had to say pick game of the decade, I, I yeah, I'd pick Dragon Quest Eleven. But of course you would, you fanboy. Of course I would. I'm absolutely a Dragon Quest fanboy. But what if it couldn't be a Dragon Quest game? Uh, hmm, that's an interesting one. Uh, let's see. I mean, that's a tough one, huh? Because there's a bunch of them. I mean, I, I might I put Skyrim there then. Okay. <laughs> it would be Skyrim. I was, I was wavering. Zero Ranger. <laughs> Zero, Ra- Zero Ranger would be indie game of the decade. Ah, gotcha. There you go. Zero Ranger, definitely indie game of the decade. Um, all right, out of twenty, um, I mean, obviously it's catered to his taste, not mine or yours, but a uh, pretty good list. I mean, there's nothing on here that's like I'm offended by, you know. So I'm gonna give it an eighteen. Oh no. Yeah, I'll give it an eighteen as well. There you go, Kyle. I'm gonna say sixteen. Okay. Ooh. Harsh. Not really. That's a low. How low can you go? <laughs> All right, let's let's do Manix 100 best tit- uh, titles, 100 best uh, titties. Now, 100 top songs of the 2010s. He says it was a tough one to do. Um, the way we do 100 lists is I'll just list 10 of them at a time, and then we'll comment between them each decade, so to speak. So, uh, number 100, The Bigger Picture by Dream Theater. Number 99, Daydreaming by Radiohead. Number 98, Ocean Songs by Daughters. Number 97, Cross of Iron by Wumpscut. Number 96, My Own God by Satan. <laughs> number 95, Arrows in the Dark by The Sword. Number 94, Ward to the Wise by Mastodon. Number 93, Empty by Death Angel. Number 92, Faith in Others by Opeth. And number 91, Waters on Fire by The Tea Party. Um, I've heard like three of those. 
I've I, heard of none of those. It's funny because it's all this like heavy metal stuff and then Radiohead. So it's interesting. It's not a not a Venn diagram there, you know, it's like two circles on opposite sides of the room. Okay. Um I mean I've heard a bunch of these, but like it's just it, it's just so weird because it's like heavy metal, heavy metal, heavy metal, and then like Radiohead. Who is yeah. texting me? It's Jesse. Get get oh. down, Gibbs. Get down, Gibbs. Jesus. Every time You're I get gonna be able to show up. I don't know. He he sent me a very cryptic test text. I'm not gonna read it out loud. <laughs> okay. Because I don't know what it means. I sent a question mark back. All right, number ninety is Heads Up by Warpaint. Number eighty nine, Holy Fallout by Cynic. Number eighty eight, Worlds Apart by Paul Bearer. Number eighty seven, Straight Razors by Dalek. Number eighty six, The Duke of Death by Wumska. Number eighty five, Terror Frequens by Terror Frequens. Number eighty four, Necrom. Ne- ne- wait, not Necrocracy. I think that is by Exhumed. Number eighty three, Old World Order by Brutal Truth. Number eighty two, Straight Out of Hell by Halloween. And number eighty one, We Are Made for the Twilight by Owl. Some cool titles, at least. I've I've heard Wumpscut before, but not that song. Otherwise. Drawing a blank. Never heard of any of those. I think Wumpscut is, what are they, like an industrial thing? A little bit, yeah. Okay. I mean, I know a whole lot of these bands. I just, like, I, I'm not as up on heavy metal as I used to be, so some of it's, like, just newer stuff that I'm not familiar with. No? I know uh, The Beast Sleeps Within You is one song by then. There's another one, but I can't recall it's... I can't recall its title now. I know that's not meant to be sexual, but it it could be. You know what? (laughs) Number 80 is Waltz and Madness by Sacral Rage. Number 79 is Bloodbound by Harmony. Number 78 is Grace by Aesop Rock. Number 77 is Rubber Corpse by Wumska. Number 76 is Anthem by Iced Earth. Number 75 is Supernova by Amplifier. Number 78 is Jaguar God by Mastodon. Number 73 is Of Iron and Gold by Windrose. Number 72, Enchanted by the Moon by Amorphous. And number 71 is God Kill by Deicide. Isn't that just another name for Deicide? Those are cool sounding songs. Yeah, like, but like that's like if you had a band called Fuck, and you <laughs> ma- and you made a song called Intercourse, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's just weird that Deicide has a song called God Kill. Um, I'm surprised but they're just really mad about religion. Okay, very mad about it apparently. Um, Anthem by Iced Earth. You know what? I haven't listened to Iced Earth in a good long time because. They got kind of bad after a while. Like, they, they got really super bad. And, Gibbs, will you knock it off? What is up with you? But there's not much, yeah, for, I, me to, not much for me to comment on there, really, to be honest with you. Surprise you ain't lost your mind with Necro yet. Oh, I think Chris means... No, she did a little earlier. You weren't here, like, when you scream laugh, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. I forget what it was that yeah. made me do that, but I do yeah. recall that happening. Number 70 is Pan's Daughter by Witch Skull. That's a cool name. Number 69 is Breakdown by Prince. Nice. That's very different. Number 68 is The Pale King by Testament. Number 67 is Carnies by Rush. Uh, Number 66 is Along for the Ride by Dream Theater. Number 65 is Give Up the Ghost by Radiohead. 64 is Psychotropia by Victor. 63 is Seal of a Star Dweller. It doesn't give the band name for that one. 62 is Acid Relax by Ill Bill. Number 61 is Retrogore by Aborted. Hey, for the first time, I've heard heard at least half of these songs. I've heard of none of them. Car- Carney's is a, is a fan. Well, that whole album by Rush was fantastic. The Pale King was a great record from Testament. Um, Dream Theater, Along for the okay. Ride. That, that's a good one. That's more of a soft song. But yeah, th- these, are some, these are some good songs. You'll have to, I guess, take my word for it, I guess. Kyle is saying <laughs> nothing apparently. at this point. And Kyle, I, I still haven't even heard of like any of those songs. I thought you were, <laughs> I thought you were like a total metalhead. I mean, I don't listen to a shit ton of music. Oh, okay. Oh. But when I do listen to music, it's usually metal. 
Well, sixty is from from Kyle's favorite band. Uh, it's uh, like anyway. a Dos Equis commercial. <laughs> I don't yeah, always I don't listen know. to music, but when but I do. When I do. <laughs> All right, number 60 is Opposites Repellent by Napalm Death. Number Oh no. Yeah, yo, yeah, yes. No. Yes. I will tell the story after I'm done with it. Number 59 is Bruja by Brujeria. Number 58 is The Band Fame for God by Blood Duster. Number 57 is Snake Pit Mating Frenzy by Nile. Wow. Uh, number 56 is Witches Never Die by Ooh, Angel titles. Sword. Yeah, I know. Number 55 is Die Into Us by The Lion's Daughter. Number 54 is The Wolves Call by Wind Rose. Number 53, Daughter of Hate by Amorphous. Number 52, Gabby Grousem by Wumpscud. Number 51, Halo Effect by Rush. Another great Rush song. Another game, like, is it me? Is it, there's a lot of songs and bands with witch in the title. Right. We've had a lot of those. Like, anyway, I appreciate the amount of times that uh, Wumpscut is appearing. There's a lot the of Wumpscut, yeah. I like Wumpscut. I feel like Please. number one is going to be a song called Colder Than a Witch's Titty. <laughs> by Wumpscut. <laughs> oh, yeah, there, there you go, by Wumpscut. Snake Pit Mating Frenzy. Oh, there's the clip. T Sparkle suffers, but why? T Sparkle was playing uh, Beat Saber with uh, some kind of hack where you can basically download any song that was on this website. And I, of course, look for You Suffer by Napalm Death, which is approximately one second long. And he failed it. I failed it the first time because I didn't know what the fuck was going on. (laughs) Yeah, because it's just like, and then it's over. And then the second time I got a hundred. No, you did it three times. The third time was like the full combo. But yeah, it I, was, I thought I got a full combo the it, second and third time. No, I, well, I, you didn't notice it if you did, because I remember the kid that was with you, I think it was one of your cousins, pointed it out, like you got a full combo. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Number 50, Children of a Faceless God by Symphony X. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Before I continue, didn't that, isn't that kind of an older song? Children of a Faceless God. What, what, what? What album is that on? We're going, we're going oh, okay. That it, it just it just gets in there. It came out in 2011. I was like, wait a minute, I remember that one. That's a good song too. All right, sorry. Number 49 is V by Viced Earth. Number 48, Creature Lives by Mastodon. Number 47, Moon Above, Sun Below by Opeth. Number 46, Hardwired by Metallica. Number 45, Native Blood by Testament. Number 44, Cygnus Terminal by Vector. Number 43, Speed of Light, page 102 by Kid Koala. 42, Blood Letters by Tombs. And number 41, England by PJ Harvey. I didn't know she was still around. I actually recognize songs from this list. So do I, but I'm just... PJ Harvey still around? Wow. I'm just thrown by that. That's like, you know, a voice from the 90s, so to speak. I have no idea who that is. She's a, <laughs> you know, you know, a rock singer. She played guitar. She sings. She was pretty popular in the 90s, but then she kind of fell off the map, and I didn't know she was still putting out music. That's actually kind of cool. Apparently she's still on the map. Damn straight. Um, I don't really care for the new Opeth music. To be honest, I think they went a little too weird. Hardwired, it's a good song by Metallica. Um, I love Children of Faceless God by Symphony X. That's a great song. Iced Earth, once again, like I said, I don't know. Their new stuff is kind of kind of boring to me. Fun facts. Um, when I first met AJ, they were totally into I- Iced oh. Earth. Oh, and a- AJ's, AJ's the reason that I got into Iced Earth. <laughs> Yeah, they totally referred me to them. Yeah. And I think I might be the reason they got into Opeth. Well, so. well thanks. Might, thanks. might be. Might be. Not sure. <laughs> we, were, we were all getting into those bands at like the same time. Like, I think, I, like, Opeth, I still like the majority of their music. I just think that they got a little too weird after a while. I did get to see them live, though, which was great. Well, all right, cool. uh, number 40, The Last Scene by Mono. Number 39, Blunt After Blunt by Danny Brown. Number 38, Breaking All Illusions by Dream Theater. Number 37, Falling by Old Flame. Number 36, Pizza Funky by Stone Age. Did um, someone say pizza? Yes. Number 35, Tears of Blood by Satan. Number 34, God is Dead by Black Sabbath. Number 33, If a Mounted Could Talk by Halloween. Number 32, Rusen V by Wumscut. And number 31, The Numbers by Radiohead. 
There you go. Okay. Um, those are songs. Those are definitely songs. I mean, I know Breaking All Illusions by Dream Theater. That's the only one there that I know. I love that there's a song by called Blunt After Blunt, though. I, I doubt they're talking about blunt instruments. That sounds yeah, like... Yeah, I didn't know any of those. Yeah. That sounds like a command in Baba is You, like blunt, <laughs> it has yes. blunt. You know, I I really want to stream that at some point. I, I, gotta, <laughs> I would totally watch it. I didn't know Black Sabbath was still putting out albums. Like I know they occasionally tour, and you know you could watch Ozzy Osbourne's decrepit corpse walk around the stage like Darth Sidious, but I didn't know they were still putting out music. <laughs> you will Ozzy. return to the metal side. All right, number. I did th- tell you that I saw Ozzy live back in like september 2018 right is it true that he crumbles to dust at the end of every concert that he what crumbles to dust at the end of every concert yes there you go kyle's so confused <laughs> no idea what See, we're talking about. the joke is he's old yes <laughs> yes he's old <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, black 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 Sabbath haven't good been good live for a long time, Barrel. It's true. Okay, number thirty. I am sav. Am I savage by Metallica? Number twenty nine. Lucky Man by Marillion. Number twenty eight. Warmonger Schussel by Wumpscut. Number twenty seven. Ashes by Tombs. Number twenty six. Voice of Treason by Opeth. Number fifty. Uh, twenty five. Be Comfortable Creature by Explosions in the Sky. Number twenty four. Lords of Thunder by Angel Sword. Number thirty. 30- uh, 23 fear by kendrick lamar number 22 dark is the bark by ulver <laughs> and number 21 full stop by radiohead hey man pro- else- props for putting Ulver on the list at all though who else feels like a really old and decrepit person just like <laughs> me it's a person in their metal songs Wait, how do you feel old when you're because yeah no two no, stars not allowed no you're not allowed to hear that by the way uh dark is the bark was a cover song that Ulver did and they yeah uh, you wouldn't think that Ulver would do cover songs but they do it really well so um yeah there's some good songs in here i just want to point out I, when i saw lords of thunder i started like laughing because i was thinking oh at least it's not the sonic lords <laughs> we are alone rangers <laughs> we want more beer oh god i ain't farting on no snare drum all right number 20 sugar daddy by d'angelo and the vanguard number 19 heresy by wump scott number 18 shades of gray by amorphous number 17 midnight sun by old flame number 16 brothers by iced earth number 15 halloween by mastodon number 14 lotus flower by radiohead number 13 the chronomancer 2 nemesis by the sword number 12 halo on fire by metallica and number 11 the enigma machine by dream theater I would like to point out that Midnight Sun is actually um, the title of the next book that Stephanie Meyer was going to write. Oh. Except the uh, manuscript halfway through or so got leaked, and therefore she was like, no, she's nobody, like, gets, nobody yeah. gets to read it. She's like, fuck y'all, right? Yeah. That yeah. Al- so now you, now you can read the manuscript of Midnight yeah. Sun. That, al- that almost happened with... Um... Uh, the what was that movie? The Hateful Eight. I think the script leaked out, and Tarantino was about to say "fuck it," but I think then he did release it. Obviously, so and um, it was like, "No, I'm not going to be Stephanie Meyer." <laughs> yeah, yeah, he didn't want to be compared to her, I guess, right? Um, I just want to say the Chronomancer Two Nemesis sounds like a like a game that you'd play on like Sega Genesis. <laughs> I just want to point it really that out. Does. All right, all right. Here's the top ten, guys. Number ten, "The Anarchist" by Rush. I fucking love that song. Uh, number nine, "Murder One" by Metallica. Number eight, "Running" by Nine Inch Nails. Number seven, "These Walls" by Kendrick Lamar. Number six, "Dex Dark" by Radiohead. Number five, "Sorceress" by Opeth. Number four, "Implode" by Slayer. Number three, "Dry Bone Valley" by Mastodon. Number two, "Guillotine" by Death Grips. And number one, "Flamethrower" by Judas Priest. I agree that they have that opinion. Flamethrower, not alone? Like, if you're going to pick one Judas Priest song 
from the 2010s to be your number one song, Not Alone? Flamethrower? I mean, okay. Um, Dry, Dry Bone Valley sounds like a Mario Kart track. I just have to throw that out there. Maybe we should have a game like Mario Kart track or Mastodon song. I don't that know. sounds great. It, yeah. The Anarchist is a fantastic song. I just want to throw that in there. Um, yeah. Not even this Priest song? What's that? Oh, I was asking because uh, Terry said Terry's, in chat. You didn't recognize a single didn't. one? Not even like the Metallica songs? Because a few of the, I mean, those yeah. are, it, it was pretty much the whole, you know, last album that they had was pretty much on this list. Yeah. And then the Judas Priest one, because I know you were listening to Judas Priest recently. You gave it a 50 because it had no Alice in Chains. Uh, what was the last album they put out, though? Wasn't it in, like, 2009? You Almost Considered Alone. Okay, that's fair. Um, okay, so out of... Oh, Terry, if you want to hear a really good record, get uh, Nostradamus by Judas Priest. It's really good. It's a double album. It's really good. You could listen to the whole thing on YouTube. Um, out of 100... Oh, that's tough, man. I'm, I'm going to give it like a 73. Yeah, yeah so. I don't know how to rate it because I know that the majority is just, I just, I haven't heard these songs. Yeah, yeah, Chris, I mean, it's, it, it's only stuff from this past decade. So I think, I don't think Alice in Chains has put out anything in this last decade. Let me look into it. But just spit out a number anyway. 69. I, <laughs> nice! I'm going to say like, 15. 15? Jesus Christ! That's Whoa! How many I actually knew. I'm sorry. That's not what we're writing wow. on. Okay, so apparently Alice in Chains did put out two albums in this decade. The Devil Put Dinosaurs Here and Rain Your Frog. So I have two things to download. Nice! Yeah, just because you haven't heard of it. I mean, it's not like it was filled with a bunch of like, uh, like Kim Kardashian, you know? True. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not like it was uh, Brooke Hogan. Or um what's that dude? What's that dude that like he had a song and then he got sued for plagiarism? Vanilla Ice? No, recently. <laughs> the song was called Blurred Lines. I can't think of the guy's ding, name. Ding, uh. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, the song the song was Blurred Lines and it was ripped directly off of like an old song. I think Pharrell was a guest on it, but I can't remember the dude that sang the song. No, Robin I Robin Thick, hey, thank you. Simply Muno. Simply Muno came up with that. Thanks, and, Muno. and so did Kyle. Okay, so that was a thing that happened. I'm gonna bring up my phone because I do have some more lists on here that I wanted to do. So oh, Jesus Christ. Let me just uh pick a list here. Okay, here we got one. You can't stand Robin Thicke? That's that's a valid opinion to have. When was it in the Discord, Chris? Okay. Food and beverage managers share the satisfying customer shutdowns they've ever dished out. So we got a retail list. I always enjoy doing these. Oh, retail list. Retail, yeah. But they're shutting down evil customers. Yeah. Tiny still ain't shit. I had a customer try to use a coupon on an item that wasn't eligible due to it being on sale. The customer asked if I could ring it up as full price and then apply the coupon, thus saving him like $3 compared to the sale price it was currently at. I told him I couldn't do that. He then asked to speak to the manager. I told him that I was the manager and that, again, I wasn't going to change the price. Now, we have a policy of just taking care of the customer in certain situations so that it doesn't escalate because our district manager will just give the customer whatever they want anyway. So I figured if this guy was going to push the issue... I'd relent because it was only three bucks difference anyway. But the very next words out of his mouth were, well, isn't it your job to give me what I want? No, I repeated my refusal and he ended up buying the item. There you go. Shut down. She do be wild. All right. I worked in a bar where the bartender was the manager for the night unless the actual manager was in. This night he wasn't, so I was manager just for that night. It's a relatively small but busy bar in Amsterdam. We got many tourists there. This evening, there was an American lady sitting outside on a table right by the door. From the inside, it's three steps down to street level, so a little stair thingy. 
One of my co-workers was serving outside, and when she was on the little stair, she lost her balance and dropped a glass from the tray she was carrying. Miss America went nuts because of this. According to her, we put her in safe, her safety in danger because the glass was flying everywhere. She could have been blinded, or the glass could have cut her. She demanded a new drink and new food because there was obviously glass in it. The way she demanded this stuff, her attitude and loudness made me very willing to set her straight, so I told her that if she wanted a new drink and a piece of food, that'd be no problem if there was actually glass in it, which there wasn't. It's worth noting that the glass fell a good 10 feet from her table, so since there was no glass in it, she didn't get splashed upon by the drink that fell. Nothing really happened. I asked her to calm down. I told her she's at a bar where things get dropped. She then went into full American mode. Uh Uh-oh, we have a Karen. (laughs) I love that full American mode. It's true, though. And demanded to speak to the manager. Told me she'd call her lawyer and would sue us. At this point, can you imagine that lawsuit? They dropped the drink and it was loud and scary and I pooped. (laughs) There was glass. It existed. Glass existed. There were shards. Glass happened. I'm Uh, I'm suing. Yeah. At this point, I couldn't really control my laughter, and I told her, I'm sorry, miss, you're in the Netherlands. We don't sue each other for stuff like this. No one has ever made a fuss about a glass being dropped, as most people seem to realize that's what happens in bars. I'm the manager tonight, but I'd be happy to call the owner for you so he can come over and tell you the same story in a different voice. I'm sure he won't mind leaving his kids at home for you. She then shut up, paid, and left. I think she wrote a nasty review on some website, at which point the boss asked me what happened, and when I told him, he said that he'd frame the lawyer's letter if it ever came in. It didn't. Of course it didn't. I mean, like, it's kind of reasonable if you're kind of scared that that there might be um, glass in the food and be like, you know what, I'm really kind of concerned about this. Would it be okay if... Yeah. But not to, you know, be... Scream and yell and make demands like a Karen. Yeah. Plus, let's be realistic. If a glass dropped 10 feet away from you, the the glass didn't get into your food. I wouldn't actually be worried, yeah. Many years ago, I worked at a drive-up coffee place. A woman came in with three kids and an attitude. She barked orders, complained about everything, demanded free samples for each of her kids, and never put her phone down. Going in at, like... Seven at Day Street. Kyle's going in at seven, guys. Did, did y'all hear oh, that? I forgot to mute. I forgot yeah. to mute. <laughs> oh, God. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I overheard her say that she was heading out for a road trip and would be driving for several hours. That's when I made a wee mistake with her order. Instead of a large latte and four small decaf mochas for her kids, she got a large decaf latte and four small regular mochas for her kids. I figured that she got about 20 miles down the road before the kids started going insane from their caffeine sugar mix. <laughs> nice. I wonder if that mistake was a little, uh, you know, on-purpose accident. I hope so. Yeah, you begin to wonder. I hope so. All right. I work at a restaurant where you fill in a ticket with all the ingredients you want on your pizza slash pasta slash salad. There are large boards above the counter explaining how to order correctly. Once customers fill out their ticket, they can bring it to the register. During a weekend lunch rush with a line of at least 25 people, a woman comes up to the counter and tells our cashier what she wants. When the cashier tells her that she needed a ticket, she gets annoyed about the inconvenience all while the line builds up behind her. She demands to be given a ticket and begins filling it out right there. Seeing this, I come up to the cashier and tell him to ring up the people behind her while she takes her sweet time making the important decision of which pasta sauce she wants. I think I've heard this story. She finally finishes... Yeah, sounds legit, right? She finally finishes, pays, and sits with her gaggle of companions. Later, she comes up to me and tells me that my behavior of having the waiting customers pay before her was extremely rude. I respond by telling her we try to make sure every customer gets speedy service and her holding up the line because she didn't read our large signs was also rude to all the other customers. She tells me she'd like to speak to the manager to complain about me. With a gleeful and maybe slightly evil grin, I reply, You already did. I'm the manager. The look on her face when she realized she wasn't going to get to whine and feel vindicated about my mistreatment of her was lovely, and even though this was years ago, it still brings me joy. I actually have a um, story that is somewhat similar to that, in which I was... Wait, does does this involve Yu-Gi-Oh cards? 
No, oh, okay. that's actually not the same one. Okay. But that there is a story about that. Yeah, because you've told that one. Okay, but let's let's hear. Okay. Come on, tell us. You got to tell this, us. This this one involves somebody um, trying to return something and buy something else, but the thing that they were returning was uh, less expensive oh. than the thing that they were buying. And you know, you'd normally think that that would be a simple transaction, but in this store, it was not. To be honest with you. Nothing about that sounds simple because I know how those registers are nightmares. We didn't even have computerized registers. Oh, dear. Yeah, it involved like calling Central and creating an account Uh. and stuff like that. So anyway, I was trying to sort through her shit. And um, she was like, if I could just speak to the manager of this department. Oh. And I was like, I am the manager. She Well, she'd actually said, I know you're new. If I could just oh. the of the department. <laughs> oh, my. And that's because when she made her initial purchase that she wanted to return, um, one of the older, like, you know, by a couple of years or whatever, um, employees was working in there while I was on lunch break. Okay. So wow. she so she decided that the person who was there is the manager because she's older. Oh, uh, of course. She, <laughs> As you do. She's like, I know that you're new. Ugh. Why would you say that to somebody? Why would you say that to anybody? I know new. that you're new. I know that you're new. She's trying to give off the air. I come here all the time. I know everybody. Yeah, that's literally like, I'm, I'm not even yeah. exaggerating. Yeah. That's, that's really the tone she took. Yeah. I know you're new. Ugh. All right. Um, next one. Many years ago, I managed a restaurant in Missouri. Group comes in for Sunday brunch led by maybe the rudest woman I've ever encountered. Not sure if she thought treating my staff poorly would win her friends among her group or if she was just a grade A grouch, but within 10 minutes, she had one of my waitresses in tears. So I put on my best server on the table and I hovered nearby. The server, Doc, was from Arkansas and had a great Arkansas accent. He walks over and introduces himself to the table and the woman immediately says, Oh my, you sound like a dumb hillbilly. Isn't there a waiter worth anything in this whole restaurant? Wow, the fuck? What a hoe. Jesus Christ. Which was weird, was because, which was weird because she also had a pretty thick southern accent. But I guess there's a difference? Upon hearing this woman start berating my best server, I intervene. Excuse me, I couldn't help it over here. Is there something wrong? The woman turns to me. The rest of the table is now busy looking anywhere else and says, Yes, there is. Every waiter and waitress in here sounds like an ignorant redneck. What kind of place are you running here? I looked at her and smiled. Sorry to hear you're dissatisfied. Tell you what, why don't you pack up your stuff and get out of my restaurant and I'll make sure you're never served here again. Frankly, you sound like the most ignorant person in here right now, and I'm not interested in serving vicious customers like yourself. Go eat someplace else. She hit me with the usual, how dare you? I'll talk to the owner. I'm not going anywhere. But I told her no one talks to my staff that way, and unless she feels like getting arrested on a Sunday afternoon, she'll be out the door in five minutes. She left. I had to comp the tables around them because I got pretty heated and used some language that isn't appropriate for Sunday brunch, but all in all, it was totally worth it. I want to know what the language is. <laughs> I ain't mean, like fucking shit and good stuff like that, right? Honestly, no, yeah. honestly, if I was eating there and I saw that, I would, I would, I would insist on paying for my meal. <laughs> Bigger tip. I would, yeah, I would want to give them my money. Just saying. Thank you for not putting up with that kind of bullshit. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 good. Okay, uh, I ran an ice cream shop. I must have. I must have had to say, actually, I am the manager at least once a week. My favorite was a woman I eventually banned from the show. I, you know what? Now, let me ask you if you remember this, because we did a list, and I know you were on the show then. I'm not sure if Kyle was, where it was a, it was a similar theme. It was I am the manager stories. It wasn't this ice cream mm. one on there? I don't think so. Like, I know that the one about um because i said it earlier there was one that was on that other list and i was just like oh that's interesting that was the one with the 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 pasta salt the pasta thing but isn't this the one where like she went all the way up to corporate i guess we'll find out yeah i don't recall this one she would come in with her husband and bratty kids then she would try to order a large three scoops and ask me to put it in three single scoop cups but only charge for the large i said no you either order three single scoops or you order a large the difference in cost is quite a bit but it's fairly standard for companies to do it that way 
I wasn't happening, having it. She got mad that I wouldn't do it. First she said, well, the manager let me do it last week. No, I didn't, I told her flatly. Well, then whoever was working here let me do it, and they said they were the manager. No, they didn't. I believe my workers over you. Well, I want to talk to the manager. I am the manager. You are talking to me. I said no. Fine. And then she and her little family stormed out without any ice cream. No skin off my back. She was rude to me and my workers. I wasn't going to let her treat us this way. Then she called the shop the next day when I was working again. She said, hello, I need to speak to the manager. I'm speaking. How can I help you? I was in there yesterday and some little hussy lied and said she was the manager, but she Ooh. wouldn't let, get, let me get what I wanted. That hussy was me. You're banned from our location. Don't come back. She then tried to call corporate to report me. This, Yeah, this is that story. Hey, if you don't remember it, it's new to you, right? Corporate outsources complaints to the manager with the highest rating in the area, which was me. So when she called corporate to complain about me, she also got me. I wrote up the details of the conversation and forwarded all of her messages to the district manager, and he agreed with my decision and allowed me to send her an email officially banning her from the store. Holy shit. Nice. Jesus. Yeah. That is satisfying to listen to. It is. To. I mean, that one, the pasta one and that one were also on another list that we did with a similar theme, but they're so good that, like, mm, who cares? Let's just do it yeah, again, the, right? Yeah. Yeah. The Yu Gi Oh cards it was nowhere near on that level. <laughs> okay, but I want to hear that story. Oh, uh, well. Okay, do you want to tell it, Kyle? Uh, 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 now, because Kyle wants to hear it. Where did I tell it? Because it I, was it I, was on list critics, but uh, I think that was one of the ones that Kyle missed. Oh, uh, okay. So um, I used to manage. The, well, this this is the same place. I used to manage the men's and boys department of this department store, and uh, we sold cards of various games, and Yu Gi Oh was one of them. And uh, we sold the ones that were like Americanized, and they had nine cards in them, and then we sold the Japanese ones, and they had six cards. And this is incredibly important for some fucking reason. It's got to be and, confusing, uh, right? It wasn't to me because I just I heard it so many goddamn times, and I'd repeated it, so just I I just knew. But anyway, um, another day, I was in the gift department because I was you know relieving somebody who was at lunch. We did the shuffle all the time. And all of a sudden, I've got my manager coming towards me, and she's all like, did you tell so-and-so that there were nine cards in the Japanese deck? <laughs> and it was stuff like that. Because apparently, you know, some kids had purchased the uh, the six-card decks, and, and they, they were like, oh, oh we're we going to pull... We, got, we, we, we only got... Exactly. Nine, we're going to pull a fast one here. Fucking kids. And, uh, and apparently, the, uh, the woman who was relieving me... Um, was like, oh, is she tall? Does she have brown hair? And she described and you. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, basically. And they were like, oh, oh, she was. She, that's so and so. And and meanwhile, you've never met these kids. Right, I've never yeah. seen them in my fucking life. Yeah. So they're going around to the store, like claiming that my name, I lied, and uh, I told I told my manager. You could say I now. Like, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, imagine these kids going, now lied. <laughs> now lied. And uh, and I actually saw and I actually saw these kids like telling the lady in the juniors department, but now lied. And I'm looking right at them and the manager was like, And they have no well, idea they're talking about she... you. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she and my manager was like, but she's never heard of you. And points right at me, and these two kids look at me, and you can just see the color drain from their face. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, the jig is up. So then they decided to default to the other Karen tactic, which is to say, "We're never going to shop here again. Good. We're going to tell everybody you just lost five customers." Good. F five customers so, that try to scam you, right? Five entire customers. Yeah, no that try to scam them. you out of three Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Yeah. What if, what if I tore a hole in my sweatshirt? <laughs> it's actually that's actually like one of their arguments. And it was like, well, if you did it yourself, well, we're not gonna reimburse well, it. I mean, okay, you could do that if you want to, but I don't know what that has to do with anything. Like <laughs> I didn't just... I didn't I didn't know Yu-Gi-Oh was like that. I thought it was just cards. <laughs> I know, right? I know y'all tearing no, each other's clothes were... and shit. I, I have a feeling that it was some sort of like a mimicking like a threat of <clears throat> what some the parents sort. Do. Oh, uh, okay. 
Like they learn that if you say, but what if, but what if, but what if. Okay. All right. My manager, let's call her Kelly, was getting ready to make a run to the bank. She came up and wordlessly took the big bills out of my drawer when it popped up after a transaction. We've worked together for two years and done this hundreds of times. I hardly noticed. My customer, however, seemed to think it was bad for some reason. She glared at Kelly and said, that was really rude for you to do that. Kelly turned. Pardon me? I said that was really rude for you to just butt in like that. Kelly offered a generic retail apology and continued on her way to the office. Some customers are odd. Not much you can do about it. The lady rolled her eyes and started gathering her things together. Who would I ask about requesting a donation, she asked. It's for the high school soccer team. With growling amusement, I directed her to the office. I craned my neck, wanting to hear what was said. I could hardly contain my laughter when I heard, You're the manager? Followed by the lady walking out of the store very quickly. Kelly and I both had a good laugh about it. Make sure you check who the manager is before you decide to be a pompous old witch. There you go. It's real. Yep. Yeah. Wait, did you send me another list? Hold on, let me look, Moogle. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll do that next. It's a real quick one. We'll do that next. Okay, uh, my parents owned a franchise deli for some 12 years. My uh, mom was there full-time making things run smoothly, and my dad would be there sometimes to help out when he wasn't working his tech job. Well, this lady came in one time and ordered her food. When it arrived, she claimed the kitchen made it incorrectly. Oh, I've heard this one. It was it, not on a list critics, though. I just read this on Reddit. My mom apologized for that inconvenience and calmed her meal as we gave her a certificate for a free sandwich next time the lady came in. So the lady came in again, ordered her food, and claimed again that it was made incorrectly. My mom again apologized and gave her another coupon for a free sandwich. This happened probably one or two more times. My dad had heard about it and was convinced they were just being scammed by this lady. Well, the next time the lady came in, my dad happened to be working in the kitchen. Sandwich lady came through the drive through and ordered. My mom recognized her, and to make sure everything was perfect, my dad made her food himself and gave it to her. A couple of minutes lady, later, the lady called the store to say the food had been made wrong again. My mom set the phone down, went to my dad, and said, That lady is on the phone and says, You made her food wrong again. My dad said, You tell that bimbo I didn't make her food wrong, and that she's never welcome in this restaurant again. My mom picked up the phone and said, Uh, but the lady cut her off. I heard that. You tell that boy he is fired. My mom responded with, man, that boy is the owner of the restaurant. The, la <laughs> the lady hung up and never returned. My parents both had a long laugh about that whenever they're thinking about all the stupid stuff that went on with that restaurant. That's great. It. That boy. Tell that boy he's fired. Yeah. All right. Uh, this guy wandered into the lobby after we'd locked the doors because one of our doors malfunctioned. I politely told him that our lobby closes at 10 p.m. and that he is more than welcome to go through our drive through which is 24 hours. He started screaming at me that he will have me fired, that he used to be a manager at so-and-so place, and that he will find me after work and mess me up. It's a, a reasonable reaction, right? He asked for the manager on duty. I smiled really big and said, Sir, I am the manager of this establishment and the manager on duty. You have two options. You either leave and don't come back until you're sober, or you can leave in handcuffs. Your choice. He left, but I caught him hanging out by my car. He didn't know it was my car at 2 a.m. So I called the police and they arrested him on the property. He had slashed everyone's tires. Jesus. That's Damn. A, I mean, imagine just like going into a place and they're like, oh, hey, yeah, you got to go through the drive through We're actually the lobby's closed and you get so angry that you're like i'm gonna cut everybody's tires like what what is there to be angry about i thought i had anger issues shit right not at that level right have you ever slashed anyone's tires now i have never i've accidentally um like hurt my own property oh hurt. well i mean we've all done that damaged my own yeah. property <laughs> I hurt my property. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. My manager once had an unintentional I am the manager moment backing me up. It was late fri uh, February, and a customer came into the produce department and asked if we had any pomegranates. I said, no, I'm sorry, pomegranate season just ended. We won't start seeing Southern Hemisphere ones for another few weeks. He's like, what are you talking about? Pomegranates just came in season. Now, I know my produce, but my manager was one of the few people I know who knows more about it than me, and he is happened to be one aisle over. I said, Oscar, do we have pomegranates? He answers in a true Oscar fashion. They're out of season now. Come on, you know that big dog. This just angered the customer more. He demands to speak to my manager, so I shout over to Oscar. Oscar, who's the produce manager? By now, Oscar looks really confused, and he says, Hey, you feeling all right? You know I'm the manager. The customer just turned around and walked out of the store. <laughs> I love that. Are you feeling all right? 
<laughs> I'm a manager at a restaurant. I have these moments, but nothing beats when I have to summon the owners. I had a table upset that there was a hair in her food. I was trying to see if she wanted a new pizza or if I should just remove it from the bill. The lady kept asking, what, what would you want? My answer is get a new pizza, but I couldn't say that. I would make the same offer to her again. She then physically shoved the bill into my shoulder. Make this all disappear, she slurred. I say nothing and go right to alert the owner. He was sitting at the bar. He's about 6'4 and 250 pounds. He creaks out of his bar stool and approaches the table. Only a few people are in the restaurant and I can hear perfectly. There are four people at the table, three of whom are embarrassed by their friend. He points to one gentleman. Did you enjoy the food? Yeah. Did you enjoy the food? Yes. Did you enjoy the food? Mm-hmm. He turns to the lady. Well, everyone else enjoyed their dinner, so why in the world would I give it to them for free? Your pizza's on me, though. Have a good night. He turned around and sat back down. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we got one more here. I used to run a bar. I'd usually be in the office or supervising, but I got bored one night and covered the bar whilst the bartenders went out for a smoke break. This woman comes up with her friends and quickly becomes an annoying customer. Takes forever to decide on drinks, keeps trying to get free shots, trying to haggle on drink prices, all while being rather rude. I start to get irate as the bar starts to get busy. More and more customers are trying to get drinks, but this woman will not decide what she wants. Eventually, I tell her that there are other people waiting to be served, and I'll come back to her once she's ready to order. That did not go down well. The woman starts shouting at me, saying how she could take as long as she wanted. She was there first, blah, blah, blah. She ended her ranting by saying that she wanted to speak to she didn't want to speak to a terrible bartender anymore and just demanded to see my manager. I oblige, go into the office, a door right next to the bar, wait for 30 seconds before coming out, come back out to the woman and say, I hear you've been having an issue with a member of my staff. <laughs> is, this, is this an effing joke? I said go and get your manager. You're looking at him, love. And seeing as how you've wasted my time and all the good folks' time, you can wait till everyone's served before you. The look on her face was priceless. She began swearing at me profusely, even trying to throw somebody else's drink over me. By that point, I had more than enough reason to throw her out of the bar, which I did to the delight of the other patrons. I was tipped well after that, but I put that in the tip jar because managers don't get tips. At least the bar staff got some money and I got a laugh out of it. Nice. I love wow. the whole thing where he comes out, I heard you're having a problem with my staff. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, uh, okay. So I, I, there, there weren't numbered, so I'll just, we'll, we'll give it letter grade. I, um, despite sharing some entries with a different list, because I guess these are curated from similar areas, I'm going to give it a B plus because I enjoyed it. It's got an A from me. Nice. Okay. A minus. A minus. There you go. Gibbs knows I ruined it with my own uh, 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 story. <laughs> no, your story was good. I mean, you know, I've heard it, but Kyle hadn't heard it. But I, I enjoyed it. Okay, uh, so I got a list here from the Moogle Master, the master of all Moogles. Clearly, it is his top ten favorite female video game characters. So, uh, Ooh. that's a thing, right? That sounds exciting. Yeah. Number ten is Aeris Gameborough from uh, Final Fantasy VII. She's cool. I, I ain't got no problems yeah. with Aeris. I mean... And by the way, before any of the nerds out there go, uh, it's 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 actually Aerith. Well, it's spelled that way, but it's pronounced Aerith. <laughs> That's why that mistake was made, because they were going by the phonetics. Uh, number nine is Aleph from Shining Force. I'm not familiar with Aleph from Shining Force. I'm going to have to Google this. Mm. Uh, I know that the, ma- the, the, the main character in the first Dragon Quest, the uh, canon name is Aleph, but that, that's a dude, so... Let's see. Who's Aleph? She's a mage, and she's a furry. That explains a lot, since this is the Moogle Master. Hey. There you go. I'm down. There you go. Number eight is Commander Jane Shepard from Mass Effect. Yeah, you know, in Mass Effect, you can choose whether Commander Shepard is a guy or not. And um, every I haven't personally played Mass Effect, but everybody that I know says that the female version of Commander Shepard is way more interesting. It is pretty interesting, but like, I've not seen the male version to compare. Well, from what I've heard, it's it's mostly that the 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 actress, the voice actress, is, puts a little more oomph into it, whereas it's you know more like a generic guy voice for the male version. <laughs> Fucking, fucking white guy with a... Yep, there you go. EB Engine's head. It's because Jennifer Hale. There you go. 
Uh, number, yeah, white guy with stubble. You know the, you know the voice, mm. right? It's prob- mm-hmm. probably played by Troy Baker. You know. Uh, number seven is Felicia from Darkstalkers. I, I, naked cat lady. I mean, of course, Moog will put her on the list. She's a naked cat lady. Hey, she That's has a big cool. following for a reason, I'm certain. Oh, yes, absolutely. Know. Yeah. She's fun to play as, though. That is true. She, she's, she's good. Although I was more of a Morgan man in Darkstalkers. Uh, number six is Chun-Li from Street Fighter. She's awesome. You, you, can't, you can't sleep on Chun-Li. I mean, she did break the gender barrier for fighting games. She's cool. She's a badass, fun to play as. Usually pretty high up in the tier list, too. Can't She's go, pretty cool. Can't go wrong with her. Uh, number five is Carmelita Fox from Sly Cooper. I'm not going to bother Googling that because okay. uh, knowing knowing Moogle, I'm pretty sure I know what this character looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. I've this actually played the game, so yep, you're, oh, you're, yeah. you are right. you're right. I'm right. Okay. Number four is Bayonetta. Uh, Wouldn't well, know. I have and... kind of issues with it, but I have to read more I mean, into it. I mean, I like Bayonetta for the the attitude she has and the lines you know don't fuck with a witch and all that kind of shit but the character design is so kind of obviously fan servicey yeah and i i've heard that like oh that's part of the story and it's like yeah yeah. that's that's That's, fucking great yeah that's what hideo kojima said right Mm. um okay number three is crystal from star fox adventures just come on mogul come on yeah but still she's cool she doesn't have much of a personality, though. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you. Yeah, see, you're, you're boring, Kyle. I'm sorry, Kyle. I'm sorry that I'm boring. <laughs> no, Moogle. No, I, Moogle is boring, Kyle. I, I went to bed at 7 a.m. All and right. I got up at 9 a.m. And no. I have work at 7 a.m. <laughs> okay. No, mo- mo- the list is boring, Kyle. Not you, noun. Number two, Samus. I mean, yeah, Samus should be number one. Oh, yeah. like, what are you doing? You put Tifa Lockhart at number one? What? Why? No. no. I don't agree with that. T- I mean, I like Tifa and everything, but she's not number one. I'd swap Tifa. And, but then uh, again, okay, to, to be a little sense. bit to be a little bit fair, this isn't best, it's favorite. So there's that. Yeah. This is okay. his favorite. It's obviously a little slanted towards ladies who are animalistic. Have the ears. That are big, yeah, and not in the ra- and not in the usual place. They have tails, some yeah. of them at least. Um, I'm gonna give it a five, four. What are we rating it of? Ten. It was a top ten. I'll get a six. There you go. What about Jade, Serena, or Veronica? There you go. No Dragon Quest ladies are on there. Veronica's top tier. Okay. I just think they were slightly out of order. Well, I I, I don't even know who Aleph was because I you know I don't remember Shining Force characters that well. But once I saw like Same. a f- fox woman, I was like, yeah, that sounds like Moogle to me. <laughs> he's like two. Samus isn't one or one. Okay, um, let's see. I think we got yeah, time uh-huh. for for like one more list. Let's do one more list, guys. Okay. Uh, I gotta call it here. Well, you, you 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 can't stick around for just one more. Unfortunately, not. Oh, I'm falling man. asleep. All right, then you know what? Let's just let's just stop here then. At least at least then I can okay. get you to stick around for the raid at least. So guys, well, I was gonna leave my computer up for the raid. Well, yeah, but let's just let's just end it then because it is it is ten. Um. So let's uh yeah let's call it here, guys. That's been the list, critics. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, I still got plenty of lists on my phone. We'll just we'll just do them next time. Uh, so let's put the uh, ending soon screen that guys thank you so much let me go over the schedule with you guys real quick like um, join me tomorrow at 1 p.m. for some Fatal Fury 3 uh, been really loving that so that'll be fun at 1 p.m. Um, Tuesday night that's Tampon Tuesday you guys know that right 8 p.m. is Hollow Night oh, for yeah. Tampon Tuesday uh, Wednesday afternoon will be Skyrim Thursday night that's Terra Enigma I'm really enjoying that game so I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to that Friday afternoon will be Skyrim um, and then Saturday night we're going to be returning to Final Fantasy Adventure might even finish it on that stream because it's it's not a super long game I mean you know Game Boy and whatnot but anyway let's uh, let's see where are we going to send you guys today 
Thank you for joining us all. Did Kyle say what to Tampon Tuesday? I think Kyle did say what to Tampon I did. Tuesday. Oh, no. All right, so we got some Pokemon, some Luigi's Mansion, Cheese Balls playing Where's Waldo for some reason, Subnautica, Mortal Kombat 11. Um, shit. Who are we going to raid? You know what? It's Sunday night. It's kind of been a tradition just to raid Pictobeam on Sunday night. Let's raid her. So, uh... She's uh, playing Pokemon Sword and Shield. I think she's just shiny hunting at this point. So we're going to raid Picto Beam. And I will give you guys a raid call because why not? No, that's that's not the, that's not her name. <laughs> I put Picto Bean. I've done that. You know what? We're, we're going to make that part of the raid call. I've also tried to raid Picto instead of Picto Beam. <laughs> oh, you didn't type Bean or Beam or anything? Yep. Like auto. Okay. So there's your raid call. Picto Bean is best bean. So we're going to go in there. Please copy paste that if you're a sub. If you're not a sub, you can just substitute the emoji of your choice. Uh, so let's do that. We're going to raid Picto. Like I said, she is shiny hunting. Looks like she's hatching an egg right now. Uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's a Wooloo. Yeah, I think she's trying to get a shiny Wooloo. All right, guys. So we're going to go over there. Yes, our sh her, her stream is very positive. It we're going to really head over is. there. We'll see you guys on her stream. We'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon with some Fatal Fury 3. We'll see you guys on the Discord and just, you know, fucking around in general. Let's go. Good night, guys. Yeah.